I like that intro. It was new at the beginning of the year, and then I was just like, I don't, I don't know if I like it. It's new. <laughs> new is scary. And then I realize I do, in fact, like it. Well, hi, everybody. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of The Grand Slam. I am your host, Edgar, and I'm here with my lovely host, Mr. Will from South Texas. But Hi. Today we don't have our good uh, other lovely host, Robin. He kind of ate a bad fish yesterday, and now he's having some stomach issues. But we hope you're doing good, buddy. We hope you're doing some good stuff out there, buddy. It was a bad fish. We know who the fish was. We are currently tracking down the fish. We we have our lawyers yep. at the ready. We are going to find this fish. We're going to find We don't fish. know who it was. We don't know their name. We know who it was, but we don't yeah. know their full name yet, and we're tracking them down. Yes. But and if... we think they're from... <laughs> but if you do know Idaho? this... Idaho? Idaho? Yeah. If, I don't know. If you guys in the chat, if you guys know who this bad fish is, please contact us here at the Grand Slam so we can call the authorities and tell them that someone found the fish. But also, uh, also, if you guys notice, we do have a, we have a, we got a special guest here today, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you have seen him. He is a, uh, not, he is a, a Twitch streamer. He's a good friend of Will's. And we are, we're happy and we're honored to have him on our show today as a special guest. Um, Mr. Bot Push, ladies and gentlemen. And Mr. Bot Push, would you like to introduce yourself or give yourself a little summary of who you are and what you do, my good sir? No, he wouldn't. So I will speak <laughs> for him in words that are, I'm sure, exactly what he would say. Uh, he would say that he's from, uh, Oregon mm. and uh oh no the discord links broken says Corey in chat oh no Ooh. well thank thankfully I can I can fix that with a quick uh this yes. here and paste and boom and there boom. we go uh that's a good one yeah, so he's from Oregon. He's currently in the Carolinas. He's a streamer. I've known him for like fucking years. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's it like I I knew him when he when he used to stream uh, PUBG. Like back. Do we remember? Okay, side note, everybody. Do y'all remember when PUBG was like a a thing that like everybody and their mother was playing? I remember it I... was like it was this phenomena like it was so big. Oh, yeah, I I never played PUBG myself, but I feel like I, I've seen a lot of people play PUBG. I was like, hmm, what's, what's what's with the PUBG? But then when PUBG came out, that's when, you know, a lot of other a lot of other games came out. I think at that time, I believe Fortnite. Was yeah, one Fortnite of them? came out like not that long after or before like it was during the PUBG thing mm -hmm. but like i don't know like i i played PUBG i used to like sweat in that game like oh, just, so, just the salt flowed i got sweaty like we we got a little bit toxic but not like hella toxic we weren't the worst uh but like who that game did not bring out the best of us. Um, <laughs> I, I was hey. muted and I was chiming in on myself. What is wrong with me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, because we I've asked been you doing hey, this for so many years and I'm so good at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, ladies and gentlemen, we're professional streamers with professional equipment professionally. Um, I was chiming in with like, man, you got this like perfect. I was like, yeah, you're you're nailing it. You've got my you've got me nailed perfectly and the whole time i'm just like i'm not yeah you were okay. muted which is why when, when, which is why when we were like hey tell us about yourself and you weren't saying anything i was just like i'll take it from here uh because one That's thing so i good. know about the radio is that dead air is money so i was just like fuck it i'll take it from here and then, and then i never saw the mute thing go off and i was like i guess he's gone <laughs> i guess Bob Bush left us 
This is comedy gold right here. Yeah, um, <laughs> you are right. I am from Oregon, born and raised. I'm currently in South Carolina. Um, and I was a sweaty PUBG player like the rest of them. I traveled for it. I played everywhere. Um, it was so yeah. bad. PUBG was so, like, okay, it was a fun game. Mm -hmm. Like, when it came out for X number of, like, months after that, I, and depends on the person, right? It mm -hmm. was, like, a fun game. And, mm -hmm. yeah, it was hard, and it was, a, you know, it was, like, you versus a hundred fucking people on the map, and, you know, different guns, and find all the fucking, you know add-ons and all that crap they're not called add-ons what are they called what's the right word parts uh, mm. uh it, scopes and shit you gotta have all the stuff attachments on the guns. attachments thank for. you i'm looking for the word attachments that'll make everybody <laughs> understand what i'm saying anyway like it was the best fucking game and then like oh six months of that really just Damn. Where's on your soul? Like, you're just like, oh man, I don't want to play this game anymore at all. But you try keep doing that doing for it. three years nonstop. For yeah. Like, 16 hours a day. That's what I did. Three years nonstop. I thought I was going to go somewhere with that game. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I remember. Like, but the people did. Mm -hmm. Like, fucking, mm -hmm. there, there were people who, like, they went from, like, you know, like, middle of the stream channel channels you know like they were doing all right but and then like oh hey PUBG, i'll fucking play this and then they were good at it and people were just like i want to watch you <laughs> i want to improve show me show me master and then they they their channels boomed and it was like we're here for the PUBG content. We wish to be salty too. <laughs> um, <laughs> they stayed huge, and it was just oh, yeah. like I, you know, I I don't want to I don't want to name names. That's beyond me. But anyway, it was just like damn. Um, how did we get to PUBG? Oh, right, that's how I found you. Um, yep. <laughs> so uh, let's see. You, you're you're in the Carolinas now, though, right? Or like, I don't know I which am. one. Mm. I'm in the southern of them. Um, ah, yeah, it's it's beautiful here. It is, it, despite the fact that I, my luck is every time I leave Oregon, I bring the rain with me. So when I went to Texas, it rained for four days. When I lived in Vegas, it rained for a month. And now that I'm in South Carolina, it's rained for like the month and a half that I've been here. So I, apparently, when people say they have a rain cloud following them around, they don't understand the capacity of my life. I have one that follows me everywhere. So. <laughs> But you know, again, thank you so much for uh, thank you for coming on the show, Mr. Botbush. Oh, I'm having a great time with you guys. Thank you for having me. No problem. Well, I'm happy you're having a great time. Um, Edgar, yes, that is me. Oh, oh I'm just doing a cutaway, Edgar. Oh, yes, that is me. Uh, <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, the human embodiment of England. Oh. What? <laughs> That's what Juju B put. He said the, I, the human e bottom. Oh, because of the rain. I'm sorry. Mm. I thought I thought somebody here was being like uptight and a little bit sad. <laughs> of course, that's kind of just a certain group in England, so maybe that's not exactly everybody. I but... would say human and bio, human embodiment of England and or Ireland. It only has mist and rain in Ireland. Oh my God! Wait, you're from you're from the the northwest. You're kind of the embodiment of like um, Seattle. Uh, Seattle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As long as we don't make any Kurt Cobain jokes from here forward, I think. No, we'll be all right. <laughs> that will that will not be coming. <laughs> hey, you know what? I love England. I have a I have a couple of very dear friends in England, and guess what? They would critique that place just like I did too. Um, <laughs> also, shout if if Deets is watching, Deets Deets, our, Deets is one of my friends from England. I just want to say the thieving bastards. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's an inside that's an inside story. Maybe I'll reveal it one day. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, the thieving bastards. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
Yeah. Raindrops keep falling on your head. And that's all we can use. We cannot afford the rest of that song. It's not in the budget. It's not in the budget. We both checked several times. And honestly, the most of that song I could have used while not singing is Raindrops Keep. And whew, we're going to have a deficit. I mean, uh, we, we, were, we were lucky shit. enough to, to afford that bird that came out of nowhere last episode, you know? Yeah, the bird. Okay, so if y'all didn't see it, last episode there was a bird, and uh, it stayed around for a little bit, and yeah. we had to pay it uh, uh, per swoop into the screen. Uh, but it was a good time. Uh, mm -hmm. But we cannot afford anything anymore. Pretty yeah. much the rest of the show is going to be uh, two-dimensional <laughs> and uh, when we leave, it's just going to be us, like, click-clocking away slowly, oh, yeah. you know. Looking like Minecraft characters. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be looking like Minecraft characters, except 2D. Uh, so, you yeah. know, I it's mean, going to be bad. Because yeah. we used to have a Xenomorph. We had him on the, on the last couple, of, like, a couple of episodes before, but he was always there. Yeah. But he would be the one that yeah. would, like drench us a lot like, we'll, we'll squeeze us out of our money drench we were we were squeezed it was bad yeah. uh we ran into a deficit robin isn't here because of the deficit yeah. um yeah the xena <laughs> don't forget the xena morph that's what robin said oh cool we got robin in the chat yeah. so even though robin will be here in the chat he might be watching us judging the hell out of us <laughs> Because it just silently judging. And uh, who knows? Maybe Robin will feel better in the time it takes us to do the show. We've got to get to the show. Yes. We uh, we, to do the show and he might hop on and just just yell at us. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe not. Also, the fish man lives. Well, there we go. The fish man lives. That's going to be our first piece of merch. The fish I can't man. guarantee that, the but fish the fish lives. man the lives! Piece, right? <laughs> and it'll be a you know, deep cut reference. Oh. Right? It's a deep I'd cut that. reference that if, unless you were here for this show, the fish man lives. Yeah. Like, Do you, you think don't know I'll... what the hell we're talking about. Would you have... I will take it in a hoodie and a t-shirt. Mm. So. I imagine that I imagine like the, the, the title right there, the fish man lives. But like the fish would be a square. It would have yes, to... it would have to be. It would have to be a sandwich. It would have to be a sandwich, a, a picture of a fish sandwich. Mm. That's it. But that kind of fits the theme because when you when you when you uh, follow us on 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 Twitch, you, you get the burger. So the fish man is of course a fish sandwich. And oh, we're breaking we're breaking down walls and barriers. <laughs> and you can't see me because we're not on video here. But like my mind is exploding. It's it's we're expanding into a cosmos beyond our own. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. We have got to start this show, Edgar. <laughs> yes, I know. Edgar, take the reins. Uh, yes. Um. So uh, again, of course, we got our guest here, and we all um. I believe all of us saw this. Um. We we saw a recent movie. That uh, the movie of the day, you know, which was uh, a small movie, not a small movie, but it's it, it took a while to get into a cult following, which was the 1991 film Hook, which is about um, Peter Pan, but it's a different take on Peter Pan. And I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Pushpot, I know Pushpot was, uh, we were talking behind, he told me a about um some of hook but i want to also ask i want to say it again for the audience and for will as well was this the first time you guys saw hook or you've seen this movie before uh me personally i've i've seen it more times than i can count i grew up mm. on that movie i've probably seen it 100 plus times in my lifetime so i yeah i i, I own this movie on the dvds oh, uh did not did not watch it on the dvds watched it on netflix because who has time to actually get a video disc and put it in a machine to watch it on another machine when you can just click who um has the dvd player anymore besides their hey. xbox or their playstation cue <laughs> song of old man <laughs> river and that's all we can afford okay <laughs> god damn our budget is bad 
Um, but uh, yeah, I've got a DVD player. I've I've got two DVD players because one of them's in in storage. Uh, Hook says Jujubee Jush. Um, yeah, I I I love Hook. Um, spoiler alert! I really like this movie. Um. So I love Hook. I I have it on DVD. Um, it's Robin Williams. It's <laughs> Dustin Hoffman as Captain Hook, which is like great. Also, fun fact, and I know we're gonna get to the scene, but um, Glenn Close is in this movie, and you're going, Glenn Close isn't in this movie, <laughs> and you go, and she she is. She's in the scene, and I know we're jumping a little bit ahead, but mm. she's in the scene where uh, Hook comes back from the real world, and he goes, hey, I did the thing, and we'll get to the thing that he does, but I did the thing, and she's in, like, a beard and full pirate outfit. And, like, she's the one who gets in trouble, and we're going to describe the scene. But that's Ooh. Glenn Close. She did male drag for the movie. Oh. It was kind of amazing. I know Gwyneth Paltrow's, awesome. I know Gwyneth Paltrow's in the movie. Which I was like, huh. I didn't know if she was in the movie. Well, I didn't know many uh, uh, certain people were in this movie. Yeah, Glenn Close is in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Quite a few people actually caught their break from this movie and made really extensive celebrity cameos in this that oh, really? not a lot of people understood. Yeah, it, there's a lot of the pirates that get broke down a little bit more. I've seen a, they, this is also articles you read online, so you don't necessarily get to take them all for true grain of salt. And you take them all, you know, with like hearsay. But yeah, there's some there's some other celebrity cameos in there too that I remember. No, oh, damn. But I guess we could start with the beginning of the película or the movie, which I believe starts off um, in the. Wait, Edgar, did you just speak German? I, I uh, no, I speak. I, <laughs> I spoke español. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very cultured. <laughs> you know, um, you American from Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the beginning of the film, it's like, you know, it open, it opens up on, uh, hey, bitte, ah, Stefan, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> we're, we're running out of German, I know, um, except for like, schnell, but that's not great, um, it opens up with the play of Peter Pan, and uh, Robin Williams, Robin Williams is Peter Pan, so I'm going to just call him Robin Williams uh, yeah. because I'm not going to remember to call him Peter Pan. Robin Williams' daughter in this uh, is playing Wendy, and the whole family is there to watch her play. And Robin Williams is on the phone because he's a high price lawyer. Who does workaholic murders. father? Yeah, he's a yeah. workaholic father, mm. and it's like okay, not for nothing, but this trope, uh, the workaholic dad in the movie. But you know, he this movie is kind of like the antithesis mm. to uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, if you think about it. In Mrs. Doubtfire. Robin Williams is like he doesn't have a job and he likes to have too good of a time and in this movie it's Robin Williams has a job and he doesn't like to have a good time <laughs> because oh yeah it's like like a job and money kind of uh, like two different people or maybe yeah. it could be the same people maybe Doubtfire maybe, maybe Doubtfire is a sequel to Hook oh my god so like the first movie is him like oh he doesn't like to do stuff and then when he after the ending of book it's like he's already like he, he acts like how he is like Peter Pan but then he has to dress as Miss Doubtfire and then that's when he learns the other lesson. <laughs> Mind blown! Oh my <laughs> god, we're gonna have to start making all of the connections from Mrs. Doubtfire to Hook. Not this episode, but I'm saying in a future episode when we 
don't think of something to watch. <laughs> it's just going to be me in a room going, and then, and then there's these connections, and I'm going to be like Charlie from <laughs> Always Sunny with the with the lines connected on the map with like red string going. There's all the connections. Look, look, it, he he's he's English in this one, and he's English in the other one. <laughs> Mind blown. Um, but he's a workaholic, right? Robin yeah. Williams is a workaholic in the movie. And it's, it's you know, he, he his son during the play is just like, hey, uh, I got a baseball game and you're going to come. And 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 you're gonna you're gonna come right? He goes, my word is my bond, and you just immediately think, oh, he is not showing up to this game, <laughs> um, <laughs> and he, he fucking doesn't. He gets well, he, no 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 he tries he tries because he gets caught up at work he tries but he shows true. up and everyone is gone. But everyone, he he he, he does try to get um he gets one of his like employees to be like go over to the game and whatever I miss record it. And he's like, gotcha, boss. And then he and goes. you know this movie was made in the 90s, the early 90s, mm -hmm. because he has straight up a camcorder where, <laughs> like, you feed in the VHS tape. And it's like, hey, I, I'm going to capture all of this gold. And it's just like, <laughs> ooh, the quality is going to be. I bet that I bet it was shaky as hell. And he's just going to be like, yep, that's my kid. Uh, <laughs> like back mostly. in the day trying to pick a picture on the sidekick, like those kind of quality days. Oh my god. Oh, I just shuddered. That is a scary thought. <laughs> uh, sidekicks, my dude, we're taking it back. All right. Or like the OG uh, Razor phone. <laughs> those were hip. Everybody wanted one, and I didn't like them. But my dad got one, and I did kind of feel like a big shot in middle school. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, okay. But, like, not only... Okay, not only does Robin Williams, like not show up to the game until mm -hmm. everybody is absolutely gone but like his kid jack his kid jack <laughs> like looks over into the stands to see his dad sees that he's not there but some schmuck with a camera a, a camcorder is mm -hmm. so he's just like hey jack it is it's me i'm not your father but i am gonna film you which is in a different circumstance, creepy. Um, <laughs> anyway, and he's and so he misses the swing on the on the pitch. It's a curveball. He goes for the he goes for the swing and strike. He's done, and his team loses. It's a very sad beginning of the movie because he didn't have then, his, he didn't have the energy or the motivation because his dad wasn't there. Yeah, because Robin Williams wasn't there, and. Right. Then they have to go to England. That's a very strange transition, right? It's like, <laughs> I lost my baseball game and we got to go to England. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which I think is funny. I think the transition is funny. Hey, we got to go to England. Uh, because Robin Williams' character in this, because he's Peter Pan, but he doesn't know he's Peter Pan yet, right? He's, um, he's afraid of he, heights. Was, he's a, yeah, he's afraid of heights. Mm-hmm. He was, like, taken in, like, his storyline for the world that they are living in and not Neverland, right? The real world where his son is and his job. Yeah. He was an orphan who was taken in by Grandma Wendy, who's, spoiler alert, Wendy. Like, not from Wendy's. She doesn't <laughs> I make how to say that. <laughs> she, she, she doesn't make hamburgers. She's Wendy from the... Peter Pan story, right? She also makes square now, hamburgers. She also makes square hamburgers. <laughs> um, and sometimes fact, fish sandwiches on Sundays. Yeah, on Sunday fish sometimes sandwiches. Sometimes fish sandwiches. Plot twist: Which Wendy's are... the one that gave Robin the bad fish sandwich. We're coming for you, Wendy. Um, and by the way, Robin, not Robin Williams, right? Not, yeah. No, maybe both. Maybe, maybe both. both. And 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 by the way. Uh, Grandma Wendy in this movie is played by um, Maggie Smith. From Harry Potter. And yes, from Harry Potter. Professor um, McGonagall. Yeah. So Professor McGonagall 
is both Wendy, Professor McGonagall, and, and I Mother Man's Superior. Wife. And who? Iron Man's wife. Because when she, when, when, and later on in the movie, like her young, younger Wendy is played by Gwyneth Paltrow, who she plays uh, Pepper Potts in Iron Man. Connections. No, 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 no. Um, but like, Grandma Wendy. So this is where a little bit of the story gets a little weird for me. Grandma Wendy, who's English, yeah. uh, like Peter comes. Uh, I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but like, mm -hmm. what we know thus far is that Peter, who's an American orphan, had Grandma yeah. Wendy take him in, teach him how to read. He's very clear on that. That <laughs> she taught him how to read when he was 13, to and read. then got him American parents. And he's going back because Grandma Wendy is opening up a orphan hospital? Was that what it was? I thought uh, it was her age. I thought I she thought was, she's pretty old in that time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I thought I thought it was an orphanage, just an orphanage. I didn't know if it was an orphanage. Is it hospital. just an orphanage? I thought it was an orphanage like slash hospital or something. I was a little confused because they said like one of the kids is like, I wanna congratulate you on your orphan hospital opening thing. Oh yeah, and, that like, was, I it get was... it. I remember that was Jack that said that to Wendy. Yeah, and like, maybe it was an orphanage hospital. Maybe it's like they wanted to they wanted to build a, a, an orphanage, but they're like this this land is only set for a hospital. And they're like, what if we made both? What if we made an orphanage hospital? And they're like, I like where you're thinking. And then they build an and orphanage. Then, and then she goes, <laughs> but what if we added a Wendy's? Because I like to have a nice hamburger from time to time. And the thing about orphans is that sometimes they can be dreadfully hungry. And then she just like sauntered away with her cane dressed like, you know, a Dickens novel. <laughs> Just like, mm, yes, I have furs and pearls and a cane, and and I live in an old house that I really shouldn't be in yet. Uh, and, and then was she, she just, I'm Maggie Smith. Uh, and in that building, and the the, the I, I the old man that's in the building that he that lives with Wendy and that other woman are those oh her brother? God. Are those her brother and sister? Right? No, so. Uh, the old man, God, what is the old man's name? Uh, Chad, if, or, or, or Bot Push, anyone, if you can help me out. What is that old man's name? It's like Toe, to I call him Marble Man. I can't remember his name, but he definitely lost his marbles. He lost thing. his ma yeah. I've lost my marbles. <laughs> I've lost my marbles. So you have. <laughs> Toodles. His name is, his name is Toodles. Toodles. There we Toodles. Go. Toodles, T O O T L E S, Toodles, and That's right. he. I've lost my marbles. <laughs> so you have. I love. I love. Oh, I'm not gonna fast forward, but I'll get back to Toodles and why I love him. <laughs> um, so like, okay, they're they're on the tran they're on a transatlantic flight and they're in an airplane, right? And like. There's turbulence, and it's a Pan Am flight, which I feel like is a dated reference for 1991. Anyway, um, and, like, there's turbulence, and, like, everybody is on the plane is eating because, like, you used to get food back in the day. And real food. Real food, and everyone's eating, and then it gets, like, it, it scrolls through, the, the camera pans through, like, it scrolls. I'm such a millennial. <laughs> um, it pans through the entire cabin and just people eating, and then his family's eating, and then it's Robin Williams white knuckling it, gripping onto his seat for dear life, and his wife turns around and is just like, "Hey, you ought to like talk to uh, your kids about you know you kind of being shitty." Uh, and I've just been informed that Pan Am folded in 91, so it was probably still in its death throes during the film. What if Pan... Okay, side note, everybody. What if Pan Am was trying to use Hook to, like, 
save itself to be like, I know we'll 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 pay the we'll pay the movie to use our name and logo and people will fly Pan Am. That probably didn't work well. Kind of like how um, kind of well. I mean, Steven Spielberg was the one who directed the film, so maybe Pan Am wanted to get cash in in some of that, you know, Mr. Spielberg dinero, and they could be like, oh, we could bring ourselves back up, but they didn't. And they're also well, we we brought it up early, right? That like Hook kind of flopped first right off the bat. Yeah, so that, that's true. I, I remember because I was looking it up, where it's like, yeah, Hook didn't do so well when it first came out. It wasn't reviewed well. It wasn't until like later on over the years that's when it began getting its cult fault fo- when it got a cult following now. Right, yeah. It definitely flopped and then became gold later on. So I, I wonder if that was like the attempt, like you guys were saying, to get Pan Am to save itself. Was that but like they just yeah. they put all their eggs in one basket and the movie, you know, did b- terrible in the box office off oh, the yeah. bat. It did not not terrible, but it didn't do fantastic or phenomenal yeah. like which is kind of the other Disney movies were. Yeah, That's which is time. which is kind of interesting because it is a Spielberg film, and Spielberg's mm-hmm. name alone does sell a lot of tickets, because he's he's attached to Back to the Future one, two, and three, Jurassic Park. He's and it's like and with that name, you would probably wouldn't expect Hook to flop, but I my I I I do wonder like how did Hook flop? Was it just because of the movie itself, or was it not promoted that much around the time that Hook wasn't? really like out there and promoted that it didn't make that much money i mean i feel like i personally if you've seen a lot of like our our movies from our childhood grow up that they are you know amazing animated series when they become a live action they almost always flop so it might have almost been like that like the world's still not ready for live action versions of our animated series i didn't like like the jungle book or the new other stuff that they've made live action so i I think maybe that's what flopped and then people went back and watched it later on they're like well it's different than the original peter pan yeah and that's where the cult following kind of came from Mm -hmm. and that's what i actually and and it's robin williams he's a god he's a legend oh yeah so i just read that julia roberts for this film received a golden raspberry award for the worst supporting actress whoa oh my (laughs) and by the way we're gonna get to julia roberts we haven't yet but uh so like there were some good things happening in the film but i think there were some things that people just didn't like yeah and because of that it was like eh it's fine (laughs) but to like kids to 90s kids um that show was fucking amazing. I love this movie. Mm-hmm. I'm always going to love this movie. Yeah. You're going to pry it out of my cold dead <laughs> hands. You hear me, America? Um this was actually this was my um this was my first time watching Hook. I remember like seeing like bits and pieces of it in Spanish, but I never like fully sat down and watched it. And, you know, a, a bit of a spoiler alert. I did re- I did enjoy myself watching this because I d- I didn't expect like, oh, it was going to be Peter Pan, but the, the different twist of it is is that this is Peter Pan like after years and he forgot himself so it's like it's a different take on Peter Pan which I really appreciate and I'm like I, I like that I like that aspect of it I have a question Edgar was Hook in Spanish Capitan Garfio <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't remember Would- I, I, which really throws off the it really throws off the cadence of the chant of hook hook give us the hook 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 give us the hook <laughs> got feel got feel just, just like how i just like it, a lot of these like a lot of these movies like from the 80s or 90s uh, most of them like at, when i was younger i'd always there were some that we had on vhs but there's a lot of other ones that like for example that i told you home alone 2 Till this day, I've never seen it in English. I've only seen most of Home Alone 2 in Spanish. And a lot of Macaulay Culkin films, I've seen them mostly in Spanish. The only one I've actually seen fully in English is Home Alone 1. That's interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's like, it's a, but but with this, the, with this film, it's like, I I, I like the, 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 the premise they go for instead of like, uh, maybe like a live action remake of it, but I like the uh, I like the approach that they went with. Like, oh, it's Rob. They bring in War- Robin Williams, which he's really great at like doing character and stuff. And you bring him into this world where he's just like very serious. He's like, I don't want to be. I'm not Peter Pan. I don't know who Peter Pan is. And then as the adventure goes on, that's when he evolves to become 
Peter Pan. And yeah, I, I don't know if everybody at that time was ready for a live action sequel. Maybe that's what it was. Because mm -hmm. it definitely wasn't like original Peter Pan, like his origin story or like a, a Peter Pan in the moment. It was definitely like after yeah. this is what happens when Peter Pan gets old when he's when he does grow up. Yeah, you it's, know, and it's, I think I guess, yeah, you could consider it like a sequel to Peter Pan itself. That is true. Yeah, he grew up, he had his own children, he had his own family, he went back to see where it all started, and, you know, chaos broke out because it's Peter Pan's life, you know, Peter Pan, me and Peter Pan, we, 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 we resonate with each other, I don't want to grow up, <laughs> Yeah, you know, Who wants Peter to do Pan's my spirit animal. Peter Pan People want try to, to put us down, talking about my generation, anyway. <laughs> And you know, as as the movie goes on, like there's they just get to Wendy's house, and you see like Wendy and Mister uh, the the old Mister Marble Man, I'll call him, and then the other woman. Yeah, oh, I forgot his name again. I'm gonna Toodles. get it. Toodles. Yeah, Toodles just answers the door and goes. Ah! And just like yells. he just he just yells and screams, and then the door slams in their face, and the the other person liza liza it's liza because he screws robin williams robin williams can't remember anybody's name in this movie um and he, he even though he has clearly at some point talked to liza and like calls her like lisa and she goes liza and he goes that's what i said um <laughs> she, she's the maid so she's granny wendy's maid so she like is taking care of like these two like quite old people right toodles and granny wendy are like getting on in years and uh <laughs> she just goes she just screams too she screams <laughs> everybody's screaming out this door toodles goes ah! and then she just goes ah! with excitement right like ah look at these children and they're just like these are our children please don't yell at them uh and then eventually they go inside what um, the funniest part about that scene for me was like, we're in England. This is where, you know, there's, there's proper manners here. Is like what he says right before. He's like, mind your manners. We're in yes. England. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's when Toodles opens the doors and he goes, ah! and he like shuts the yeah. door. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. ah! like that. You know what? I, I kind of want that to be uh, made into a sound bite. Just Toodles screaming. Just. <laughs> that would be gold. <laughs> oh man! And you know he, uh, Mr. Robin William, he's not getting along with his kids. He's too busy trying to call. Uh, he's getting a call from the phone because I guess some deal wasn't going right, and his kids are trying to play with him. But then he screams at him and like he's like, "You, well, not in these right words, like you, f get out of here, grow up, Whoa, kids." Edgar. We're definitely going to have to edit this for the YouTube. I could have bleeped you out. I could have made you said, these f And, you know, it would have worked. Uh, anyway, um, well, yeah, he, the yelling. Robin Williams needs anger management in, like, this yeah. movie. It's, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of bad. Yeah. I was like, damn, like, he's really, he's really angry at his kids here. And the kids are like, oh, and then the son's like, hey, well, screw you, dad. I hate you, dad. And they're just they're just real mad. And then he takes them to the room and his wife is mad at Mr. Williams. He's like, you got to take care of your kid. You got to be you got to play with your kids because you don't know when you're you're not going to you're going to miss it when your kids grow up and they don't want to play with anymore. And she's like, what's going to happen whenever what happens when you're when your son grows up? Maybe one day he's not even going to want you to be at his games. And it's like, and I'm like, damn, because he's like, he's just, he's too much into his work and he's all like, I don't want to, or he's still on the phone. And then that's when she grabs the phone and she throws the phone out the window and he's like, what the? This is 1991. That phone is worth a small fortune. That, yeah, that phone was probably a thousand dollars back then. Oh, damn. Uh, also, yeah, oh God. Yeah. 91. Oh my God. This that phone probably. Oh, I'm gonna Google it. I'm gonna Google it. Also, uh, they didn't have international minutes back then, so imagine how many how much his phone calls cost every time he would oh, call back to the damn. states. Ooh. And he was and he was in England when he was calling. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was yeah, probably uh, spending a fortune, probably like five dollars a minute back then. Oh shit! Yeah, it was like six hundred dollars for a cell phone b back in the day. Oh shit! For a flip, for the flip phone. And imagine yeah. their cell phone service couldn't have been very good. Mm -hmm. So you know, it was, but you know what? Like it might have been better because not that many people had phones. So like so they in oversaturated a, in a, towers, yeah. Yeah, so like in a weird way, it might have been like way better. Also, the phones kind of looked like uh, World War Two radios. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so maybe the like you know maybe the signal was pretty good. I don't know. Uh, where was oh oh Edgar? Back yes. to the thing you were saying about the hey, you gotta play with your kids because eventually they're gonna grow up and they're not gonna want to have you at their baseball games. This is the '90s, so like uh, when Jack gets to be a little bit older, he's a teenager. Um, he's gonna he's gonna be a mall rat and like be a goth. Like those two things, he's gonna be like uh life. <laughs> uh. Um, because culture wars of the '90s um anyway sorry i was just like nah sometimes 90s kids did like 90s kids did some weird shit like if you were a teenager in the 90s shit got weird post grunge uh post grunge was a look mm -hmm. um lots of flannel uh grunge grunge um okay because you gotta take the kids. Oh, they have to go to Granny Wendy's opening ceremony for the hospital orphanage, uh, Wendy's restaurant. Yeah. And uh, gotta get a burger. Um, Square burger. And and like the kids are abducted <laughs> by Captain Hook. Also, the, the the okay, really cool small thing that the movie did the the latch for the window is just a hook, mm -hmm. like you know, cap. It's literally Captain Hook's hook, and I'm like, that's really cool. Well, um, yeah. Also, that's <laughs> ominous as hell. Uh, but anyway, like they're abducted, and they get back, and like the house is fucked up. Uh, Captain Hook came in and, like, had his guys smash the door. He used his hook to screw up the wallpaper all the way up the stairs into the room. Like, I'm just saying. Liza's terrified, too. Like, she's sitting there on the stairs, like, trembling while there's, yeah. like, hook marks going above the top of her head. And she's like, the children were screaming. They were screaming, like, the whole time. <laughs> And yeah, then, yeah. Then they cut to the room, and the kids are gone, and you know he's looking for the place. Yeah, and, and they're looking for his kids. And that's when you see the 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 sword on the door and the letter. Yeah, mm -hmm. to come get your children. And Toodles, Toodles is just Toodles just keeps saying Hook, Hook, Hook is back. Hook, gotta fly, gotta crow, gotta fight. <laughs> Just looking about that scene, just out of context, is just. <laughs> it's like, I love it. I've lost my marbles. I've lost my marbles. And so it's like they oh, and good. and then they try to they go call the police to to call for like a missing for their missing kids. And the so the police are just checking out the place and how all of them are just sitting there and they're just like, what's going on and. Robin William is not he doesn't believe that it's actually Captain Hook it has to be someone else but Wendy knows it's Captain Hook and Mr. Peter Pan Robin Williams got to go and save the day but he doesn't want to he doesn't want to believe it and another great piece of uh, Maggie Smith acting where she just like controls the scene while laying in bed and reading a book I mean like quite literally she goes Peter would you hand me my book and he does and she goes Peter, what do you remember? But well, and Robin Williams just goes into well, it used to be. Uh, I used to be an orphan, and you brought me in. And she goes, but what do you remember before? It's like, well, remember nothing. There's nothing before. The first I was an orphan, and then you, you in, and then you turn around and read. Got to be American parents, Whoa! you know. And it's just like, hmm, you've got to remember, Peter. 
and then <laughs> shuts it off. <laughs> what you think it's that? Hmm, Peter. Peter. <laughs> oh, I'm Severus. Peter, thing. bring me a four for four meal from Wendy's. Mm. Peter, I'm having an episode. That's a different, <laughs> That's a different Completely game. different one. That's completely different. Oh, Lord help me. Jesus. I don't All know right. why she didn't get a hold of Dumbledore just to get the stuff back. Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> Dumbledore walked out of the it comes into the house. Side saddle. <laughs> just, just. Hmm, children, I'll save them. Oh, and then, like, I don't know. Oh, just like shows up and just goes, I'm Captain Hook. I. Fire Kadabra! <laughs> <Just, laughs> <laughs> don't worry, children, I'm going to take you to a magical place where we can have magic and nobody particularly knows about us. Are you a wizard? Uh. No! <laughs> and then they disappear. Uh. <laughs> But, okay, I'm a little foggy on my train of events. After the police show up, mm. is, he, is Robin Williams as Peter Pan, is he just, like, looking out the window or something and then Tinkerbell as played by Julia Roberts? I think it was, uh, I think shows he, up. I think he goes up to the room because that's where she comes. That's where I remember she comes out because he's just, like, right. he, he's looking at that little front porch from the up the stairs and then you see the tinkerbell come down and he's all like whoa what the hell i'm like i'm having a weird dream and she's like you're not having a weird dream <laughs> <laughs> she's like you're not, you're not having a weird dream i'm tinkerbell she doesn't sound like that she's fucking <laughs> <laughs> american <laughs> it's just, i mean which is I'm also kind you, of give me the path because i was doing Maggie Thatcher, separate. <laughs> but like, you made her English. <laughs> it is kind of baffling, though, if you think about it, like how mixed the accents are. Because Rufio's not British, and none of the other characters are British except for Hook, and I think Shmi. Shmi. I think they're they're British, but they're like British pirates, which is kind of. An oxymoron, which is, I think. Which is say. not really British, yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like approaching British-ish. Uh, because, like, the pirate accent was, was like a quote, a real accent, but it was exaggerated to where mm. it wasn't the accent anymore. So, like, the arg, matey, arg, isn't arr. real. It's like, it's like, that's like movie shit but like right. it was an accent that was from a place in england where they vaguely talked like that and Ooh. then someone was just like oh i'll do that except i'll make everything way more dramatic <coughs> excuse me yeah, and then Julia oh. roberts being like with a new york english accent kind of thing going yeah on. like just, like a new york american accent in this hey, while everybody else is british hmm. and it's like <laughs> <laughs> Robin Williams just being like, I don't know who you are. You're a very small person, and you've got great legs, but I don't know who you are. And that was a quote from the movie. It's not me saying that Julia Roberts has good legs, but, you but know. But she does. She did, yeah. back then, especially. Like, uh, she was a very beautiful woman. And, and then she knocks him the fuck out and, like, wraps him up in a sheet oh, and just <laughs> hauls his ass to Never Never Land. <laughs> Come on, and Peter, we're going to yeat this window all the way to Never Never Land. <laughs> yeah, we're going to yeet, yeet. <laughs> just, just flies his ass. <laughs> but the thing is, she doesn't like when, I guess, either she got hit or something, or she um, purposely dropped w Robin Williams from, I don't know how how long the fall was, but because the camera is like pan on the floor and it looks like Robin Williams' sleeping body falls on you. So I'm like, how fall does he fall? Or how long did yeah. he fall? You know what? It's never never land. Maybe physics laws are just a little bit different when you're mm. entering orbit. True that. Like, I don't know how I don't know how it works because she literally goes into a star and then is just like, Pirates! Look at all the pirates! And the pirate scenes are mwah, delicious. The like they did a good job getting themselves some pirates because Yarg. he gets popped off into the pirate realm and then 
it's he, he's wearing like a tuxedo pants and vest and a bow tie and just walking around meanwhile uh julia roberts is yelling at him just going hide <laughs> stay low what is the matter with you cut to him just walking around into a whole group of pirates that says well and if it ain't mother inferior i fancy them shiny shoes and like they tried to rob him for his shoes so he runs away and and they're pursuing him and tinkerbell fights these things off julie roberts fights these pirates off and they call her like a demon pixie <laughs> you you pixie devil that's what it is you, you pixie, pixie devil and then she just beats the shit out of them and like pots and pans hit these pirates in the head and she goes all right cool put on his clothes and like he dress she Robin Williams has to dress up as one of these freaking pirates and she goes listen to me exactly what i say <laughs> and like tells him to like walk like a maniac like his like arm is drooped cuz like clearly he suffered something on the like the guy that he borrows the outfit from yeah. like walked with a cane and clearly some bad stuff had happened to him on the high seas and i guess he's trying to imitate him but she's just like now drool and i'm like the guy wasn't drooling what <laughs> she, are we doing she tells him to growl like growl and he goes Arr! and a pirate walks by and he's just like well how are you yeah. he goes, doing well, well you fine <laughs> 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 i i'm part of me laugh <laughs> yeah that's funny turn your heel in you know like things like that you know? <laughs> yeah gung, gung, gung. you want to if you want to be a really good knockoff pirate, you just do what she said. Yep. You do exactly what she said in that scene. Don't forget the drool. The forget drool it. is very important. Very important. Um, but but like, oh man. Uh, so he's walking around. He's got his glasses on. He's wearing an eye patch, and the blacksmith is sharpening Captain Hook's hook. And that's the first scene that we see Smee, and. Uh, I fucking love Smee. I loved Smee in the animated version. I like Smee now. I mean, Smee's played by, you know, Bob Hoskins. Uh, and Bob Hoskins was great. Uh, just a great actor. But uh, he looks amazing in this film. And he's just like prancing around with a red pillow to hold Captain Hook's hook. And all of the pirates around him just start going, Hook, Hook, give us the hook. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> a really strange thing. Uh, also, there's women who are, like, I think clearly made up to be uh, sex workers in this film. Um, which, like, you I can wouldn't tell put it past the time of filming, actually. Yeah. No. You, you can tell this is thing. a Disney film because of that. This is a right. tri-star film. Like, Disney would have just been like, and there are no women in this <laughs> film about pirates and Peter Pan. There are no women. <laughs> no women. At all. Only Tinkerbell. Now, I want to I wanna sidebar something, because I just pulled up their wiki page for Hook, just to get a couple extra little you know, tidbits of fun information. Did you know that there was a video game made out of this? And this is why I figured we'd appreciate it, because we're on Twitch and we're all nerds. Uh, there was a video game that was released for Super Nintendo in 1991 that was called Hook. Oh, by I, the way, and it was based on this movie. I want this. I I, I want, want it too. Game. I've never wanted to get a Super Nintendo again more in my life than I do right now, and it may flop, but I will play the crap out of it. Until <laughs> I get it. Oh my gosh! Uh, a, it was a graphic adventure point and click game developed in published okay i'm gonna read more about and another that. one was released for pc later on too so uh nice. based on the style of monkey island which i don't know if very many people yeah. know monkey Island for PC, but that's a classic classic that was back when they still had like the og macintosh and that was what you got you didn't have a windows pc you had a macintosh yeah damn i'm i guess i'm i'm not really surprised they would make a game about this but at the same time i'm kind of am especially how the how around the time it didn't make it didn't do that well in the theaters 
Well, they did that with a lot of movies, though, because even Lion King was great Mm -hmm. from the beginning, but it had a little moment where it wasn't so good, but they made a really good Lion King game for the Super Nintendo. A lot of Disney like video games were pretty good back in the day. Yeah, they they made a lot of games um, shortly after movies because Super Nintendo... I know I'm getting way off topic, but there's a Netflix series on um, how gaming started, like from back in the original Asteroids and stuff. And Super Nintendo would quickly monopolize and build and make a game. And they'd give they'd give creators like six months to be like, okay, this movie's coming out. You have to make a full game start to finish in six months for the Super Nintendo. Yeah. And they'd go to like one or two developers and that was it. That's all they had. They had a two developer team with like four coders. That was it. So. Damn. Well, fun fact of information on the way gaming has started to create. If you ever get the chance, go through Netflix and educate your nerd your nerd soul. You'll you'll learn so much. Damn, I gotta check this. I gotta check that series out. I'll See. find it and I'll send you a link when I remember what it is exactly. Also, having played a bunch of uh, Super Nintendo games, um, they made some weird ass fucking games in the nineties, <clears throat> <laughs> and like. Uh, this is actually, from what I've I've read, this is actually one of the more sound ideas, because there were some, there were some strange things. Oh yeah, and Stefan Stein chimes in and goes, uh, uh, Sega Genesis too. There was some weird shit for the Sega. Uh, <laughs> it's not all it's not all fucking uh, very fast uh, hedgehogs. It's also like. Uh, not so thin marsupials. I don't know. I, I don't know what else is involved with Sega, but they made some weird shit. Um, like they, there was a game I remember from back in the day, and we're gonna we're gonna get back to the topic. But it was like <laughs> it was like a wrestling game, so it was like Street Fighter, right? But mm-hmm. like it was claymation, and it was creepy as fuck. There were some very strange things. Is it called Clay Fighters? Uh, Clay Fighters, I think. Clay. Clay Fighters. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, it is. Oh. Because I think that game is rare now. Like, it's, like, worth a lot if you find one. And if you try to get one, it's, like, it's, let me see. I think it's Clay Fighters that's, like, rare. Unless it's, they're talking about, like, Clay Fighters for the N64 but it's like, I, I heard about, that's the one with the creepy snowman, right? Yeah, bad Mr. Frosty. <laughs> Described as <laughs> a snowman with a bad attitude. Uh, <laughs> oh, a snowman with a bad attitude. Uh, anyway, 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 back to Hook. All right, so, uh, freaking. Uh, We're never, never land right now. He's already never, become a never pirate. Land. Uh, or he's he's faced the pirate. Shmi gave him his hook on a red pillow. Um, For me. I yeah, think the red pillow thing, thing is what sells time. it. Yeah. Uh, and Shmi like gets the crowd, like does some amazing crowd work. He like gives the hook to Captain Hook in his captain's quarters, and then like fucking hype man's Captain Hook, like. Oh yeah. Like. What does he say? I'll just fucking find it. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. Now let's give him a very big hand because he's only got one. You know, yeah. <laughs> I give you the steel-handed stingray, Captain James Hook. That's just part of it. But it's like he's doing some amazing hype work, and then Captain Hook comes out <laughs> and like goes this. And this is the part I was talking about with Glenn Close because. Uh, he's like, yeah, the crew, I hate them all. Like, <laughs> and like goes, oh, thank you. Uh, we did it. We went to the world and we got Hook's children and Hook's going to be on his way. And, and I, everybody knew I was going to do it. Except somebody doubted who, and he just starts like going through the crowd. He's like, mm. not you, not you. And he finds the person at the back standing coincidentally right next to robin williams he goes right. you doubt it and is pointing at him with his hook right mm-hmm. and they just start crying and they're like yes yes and he goes oh you made a boo-boo <laughs> the boo box and they pick it this person up and throw them into a very large chest and they throw 
scorpions inside of it. Yeah. Dumb, and guess box. what? The boo box was real. Was oh, like, that was a real thing? Wait, the like a boo box was a real really thing. Happened? Oh my god. I believe so. I'm so pretty they put sure. Front man in a box and threw scorpions on top. I mean, like no, I wouldn't no. doubt it. Or, or you mean like that's a real thing that they used to have back in pirate days? I think that's a real thing that they had. Uh, I could have just imagined like the pirate, the, the captain of the ship. Yar, you did the boo boo. I did a boo boo to the boo box. No, please, not the boo box. <laughs> also, if there's any like um pirate historians out there, because I know they exist, um, and yeah. if the boo box isn't real, don't fucking at me <laughs> because I thought it was real. Okay. Um Maybe anyway, not. and that person was Glenn Close. The uh, one that's in the boo box? Vampire. The one that's in the boo box. It was Glenn Close. No way. Glenn fucking Close. And on the subject of like celebrities like appearing in this movie, um, there's a whole fuck ton of them. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me let me Glenn Close. Okay. Uh, in addition to the, uh, I'm this is me reading off of Wikipedia, which is, I'm sure, incredibly fascinating to everybody watching. <laughs> but in addition to a number of celebrities and family members who made brief uh, credited and uncredited cameos in the film, the musicians David Crosby and Jimmy Buffett and Glenn Close and NFL player Tony Burton appear as members of Hook's pirate crew. And George Lucas and Carrie Fisher play the kissing couple who sprinkled with pixie dust when uh, Tinkerbell's flying with Robin Williams, who's wrapped up in the sheet, and they fly over a bridge. There's two couples kissing, and then they start floating in the air. That is George Lucas and Carrie Fisher. Wow. What a cra That's awesome. Did you know that there was a version of this movie that was going to be made, and Michael Jackson was going to be the yes! lead? Yes! And it was going to be a musical. Yes. I oh my god! I, re I remember re I remember like watching a video about that. I'm like, if Michael Jackson is Peter Pan, the <laughs> only reason that it didn't go into production was because Michael Jackson was not interested in a part where he was in where he was supposed to forget about his past. That was the only reason that Michael Jackson backed out of the lead role. But that's who was supposed to be cast. And then they rewrote it um with james v hart who wrote the first script with dustin hoffman already cast as the captain hook damn so yeah otherwise this fly they would it almost went michael jackson as the lead Holy as an adult shit. i know there's a lot of other movies that michael jackson really wanted to be like a part of i remember there was a point where he wanted to play spider-man so he tried to buy the rights to spider-man so he could play spider-man I don't know if I would have liked Spider-Man that much. I loved Michael Jackson as a as a musical creator, but I don't know if I would have liked the movie. <laughs> well, imagine that, like a different a different universe where Michael Jackson got to play Spider-Man or got to play Peter Pan. Or heck, there was another point in time where he was going to play someone in the X-Men series. Oh, no. Yeah. He did have a cameo in, uh, in The Men in Black. I, I remember that. Agent M. That's We're the... busy. <laughs> Click. You know. <clears throat> it's whack. But anyway, yeah, a little bit of fun information. Michael Jackson was supposed to be the original pan and hook. Um, that shit's trippy to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Storyline. Uh, the, the kids, uh, Captain Hook, Glenn Close. Okay. Uh, the... Jumping ahead just a little bit. They... The, they the, in a net. The, the the kids are in a the kids are in a net. They're yeah. in a big net, and uh, Hook Hook is like, "Oh, uh, you want your kids back, uh, Peter?" Because Peter Pan like throws off the pirate getup and is just like, "Those are my kids." And Captain Hook goes, "Interesting. Uh, <laughs> I'm Dustin Hoffman." And uh, story storybook says that all seems too extreme. I don't. Uh, I, I I I do. Is that to the Michael Jackson thing? 
Yeah, yeah. To to him doing like the X Men stuff and Spider Man, but like when oh, you have Michael yeah. Jackson money, you do Michael Jackson money things. Yeah. Right. When, <laughs> you when, just, you've got, yeah. when you've got fuck you money, you can say fuck you to a whole lot of people. Oh. Uh, oh so. Uh, Robin Williams is afraid of heights, and, uh, they haul the kids up in the net, and, like, <laughs> they're just dangling there in the net, and Captain Hook just goes, Fly, Peter! Touch their hands! I'll let them go! And <clears throat> Robin Williams doesn't know how to fly. He yet. <laughs> or he doesn't remember yeah. how to fly. He doesn't remember And so he, he starts, like, climbing the mast, and, like, <laughs> like he reaches out but they're just a little bit too far away and uh he like gives up and that like crushes his kids because they're like we want to go home we're afraid dad didn't even reach out that much um but he's afraid of heights so he's like like not having a he's not having a good time he was too scared uh, he was a scared and uh then captain hook uh Fast forward a little bit more. Captain Hook just goes, oh, my great rival, my worthy adversary is afraid and just kill him. <laughs> kill him all. The war Yeah, doesn't off. he make him walk the plank? Yeah, he's yeah. going to have him walk the plank because he's just like, yeah, kill him. Kill him all. <laughs> and then... <laughs> the the scene with Captain Hook, Tinkerbell, and Smee is hilarious because Tinkerbell like comes like flying in. She's like, "Wait, if you give me a few days, I can make him be a a, a really good pan. You can have a war. You can feel like a warrior. It's gonna be great." <clears throat> and Smee comes running up with a pistol fully loaded and is just like, uh. And it's just it's like, like in Hook's face. Yeah. yeah. Point <laughs> at Tinkerbell in at Hook's face, and he Hook just like takes the gun, turns it around so it's pointing at Smee, and like <laughs> walks away. It's like comedic I, timing right there. So they got they got three days. He's got three days to make Mister Robin Williams into Peter Pan, so they can have yeah. the greatest battle of all time in Neverland. So where else does she take them? She takes them to the Lost Boys. To the Lost yeah. Boys. The Lost Boys who uh, are of varying ages. You know, some are a little, some some are like pretty dang young, and some like of them are like six. yeah, <laughs> and and some of them are like I don't know. Rufio's probably like thirteen. He's on the cusp of. No, I'd say he's probably on the cusp of like 16, 17. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, cause he's got that baby face, like that peach fuzz growing, and he's got to be just right at like, you know, that puberty age where you're probably in like 16. But he's the oldest. He's absolutely the oldest, and he's their leader, right? So, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. He's that actually, spoiler alert, not even a spoiler alert, spoiler for me. Rufio has been my favorite character from the very beginning. So, Rufi! Oh! Yeah. Rufio. Like, anytime I watch that movie, Rufio's the part. Like, the Lost Boys segment, the whole little, like, Peter becoming, you know, Peter Pan again. Like, that whole area right there, that's my favorite part of the whole movie. Like, I don't know. I think it's the bonding and the, the jokes, I think, that come out of it are just, they're gold. Gee. So the, the Lost Boys all come in and they see Mr. Peter Pan and the Tinkerbell's like, we need to, we need to get him to remember he's Peter Pan. And they're like, this ain't Peter Pan. And then they You're make, old. You're an old <laughs> you're, man. You're, you're, what is it? It's like, you're old. You're fat. <laughs> you're old and fat. <laughs> you're a big fat grandpa, oh. man. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and so then they make a line. And then everyone's like on the other side. They're like, no, this ain't Peter Pan. And then you got that one little kid that goes up to Robin Williams and stretches his face out. Like, checks his face. Go, blah, blah. Then he stretches it wide, and he's like, It is you! You are Peter Pan! You're just a bit old! And everyone's like, What? Huh? And then they go over to Peter Pan, and they're like, It is Peter Pan! And then Rufio is like, is kind of like mad. It's a bit of a grumpy man. 
because he's like, how he could didn't want to lose his power, though, I think was more than anything. He didn't want to not be the leader anymore was his biggest resentment towards Peter Pan coming back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he was in charge. He had the sword. Pan the man. Yeah. And uh, and so like now that they know it's Peter Pan, they're just like, oh, uh, they they start the training montage. So they're, they're oh, yeah. And I guess the island has like different sections of like uh, weather environments, because there is times where it's because we did see a scene where when Robin Williams falls, he falls into a snowy place, and there's a bunch of penguins there. And I was like, oh, penguins. oh yeah. And and he's training outside in the rain, and he's trying to he's trying to fight with the sword, and then so they have this whole training montage where he's failing and he's trying to learn. And then after, and then I believe after the training montage, that's when it transitions to I believe the, the uh, the dinner scene. I believe. Uh, pretty close. Yeah. To, yeah. 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 Because like they train him, like they make they work him really hard. Oh yeah. And then the, he, they they're cooking, and I I say that with a little bit of a uh, little bit of quotes. And, uh, <clears throat> and yeah, he goes like, pot. ah, and he's like smelling something cooking. So he's like, mmm, mm. lovely. Something and, good. and, uh, then they sit down and everyone piles in all of the lost boys and Rufio's what, what, like, uh, Robin Williams is going to like reach for the lid to open it. And Rufio goes like, Let's say grace. So, like, Robin Williams clasps his hands and he goes, Thank you, oh Lord, for grace! <laughs> and everyone just starts, like, pulling lids off and there's no food. Uh, and Robin <laughs> Williams is just, like, watching them eat and they're all miming eating food mm -hmm. and having a great time with it. <laughs> Robin's really and... in It's just like, Are you effing kidding me? He's like, Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the food? Where's the food? I'm looking for the food. I don't know about you, but I would leave that party immediately. Yeah. They started yeah pulling out right? and there was nothing inside of my No, no, I'm a foodie. You don't you don't do that to me. Don't do me this way. I I've been working so hard all day and I'm just <laughs> hungry. I want some food. <laughs> I just want some food. And then <laughs> And then like uh just that one of them is like, "Hey, can you? Are you gonna eat that?" Oh no! By all means, you just hands <laughs> it like. <laughs> and it's like you gotta pretend. And then Rufio like just starts yelling at him like insults, and and what what's what's the thing that gets Robin? Because Robin Williams is on the ropes in the insult contest because he doesn't have anything. He called them like him, a like, math teacher, a therapist. Yeah, like, yeah, a, and then everybody, a math teacher, <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, he goes up to some stuff that you would like, you would have to look up in a dictionary to understand even what it means, and like, they were like, ooh, brain. yeah, paramecium brain. You're like, what? That, but and everybody, all of them are like, ooh, you beat him, and then that's when the food fight starts shortly after that, right? Yeah, because yeah. he, he throws like a yeah. little piece of the food, but then that's when he's like, what? He's like, there's actual food. He's like, because you just had to believe, Robin Williams. You had to believe. And so I think the direct line is like, you're doing it, Peter. You're using your <laughs> yeah. imagination. I'm just like, all right, that is strangely wholesome. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Also, all of the food is mashed potatoes, and all of the mashed potatoes are not mashed potato colors. Okay, so what I was thinking was, is doesn't it look more like Play-Doh than mashed potatoes? Yeah, it like, looked it looked like a lot of Play-Doh. There's like one weird. It looked like it was an actual like meat thing, and everything right, else just yeah. looked like Play-Doh pie or like mashed potato Play-Doh. And, and now like, that we're older, don't, aren't you guys worried about like if that was Play-Doh, the sodium intake that those children were eating? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know we've all put Play-Doh in our mouth. That thing tastes like salt. So like, oh, imagine yeah. like. Very salty. Eating a handful of play doh like that. These kids Just, probably see, have like I, I high don't cholesterol. Think it is play doh. I don't. I don't think it's. I mean, it look. It fucking looks like. Because of right? the colors, it looks like play doh. It's definitely yeah. mashed potatoes. Yeah. But like, it's like it's like mashed potatoes that are like way over stirred so that they'll be like like 
dense as sh- fuck. Like, just like, right. this will hold its shape. <laughs> It's basically at this point like a uh, fucking uh, mortar for bricks. It's just like this will <laughs> dry nicely. Uh, also, there's an entire vat of it. Uh, like, like at one point he falls into a vat of just different dyed substance. Yeah, uh, I, may, I, I'm thinking. Video. I'm thinking that's just maybe coloring they put in it because it looked. Because it looked like mud. It didn't look like it was like the Play-Doh thing. Unless that's what the Play-Doh food they're getting is. But it's but what I'm seeing is like it's the food that comes out of their imagination. So I guess in the kid's imagination, they want to eat Play-Doh. So that, that's I mean, like, it, it might have been colors. to be more, yeah, to pertain to the children. Like, this is what we would eat if we could imagine our food. We wouldn't eat bland-looking potatoes. We'd eat really awesome-looking yeah. potatoes that look like the ra- all the colors of the rainbow. We don't you know, eat your like, we don't eat your dad's potatoes. We eat our we potatoes. Eat colored with- <laughs> colored yeah. potatoes. Oh, you get us your lame blank white potatoes. We have green mashed potatoes. But this was the '90s, and like that's the kind of shit. Okay. When did purple and green ketchup come out? Right after the Shrek Ooh. movie, right? Yeah, right. I remember that. Like, Ooh. Th- that's, th- I don't know why, but these things in my head, they are connected. Like, yeah. oh, look, it's like green mashed potatoes. Oh, man, we've got green ketchup. It's like It's like, like green why? Cheetos. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this just brings me to another gross thing about food. So you know that that means that ketchup is clear until they add coloring to it. And, oh. and also, you know another thing that's clear until they add the coloring? I know this is way off topic. Velveeta cheese is completely transparent and clear until they add the yellow to it. Oh, God. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Velveeta. And I love Velveeta. I'm not going to stop eating it, but now that I know Velveeta. what's inside it or that it's clear, I eat way less. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> but oh. I still eat it. It's like the ketchup part. It's this sickly tan color. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, Stefan. Heinz ketchup ice. No coloring at all. Coming to a store near you. Yikes. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. It's actually funny. Most of the processed foods that we actually eat are clear or very low in color, and they add. That's why you see, like, yellow number five, blue 15, red five, like, in your foods. That's food color. Orange 69. Just kidding. It was a (laughs) joke. Yeah. You'll never find. Bum, ba, dum, ba, dum. Another love like mine. We are over budget for songs this episode. Um... (laughs) <laughs> oh, back to the storyline. Yeah, we forgot a scene. Like it's the scene. It's actually before the eating scene, but I, it is after the training scene, and it's with Hook, and it's Hook and Smee in the offices of the uh, in the offices in the in the quarters of the captain, and mm-hmm. uh, like Hook is just like depressed as hell oh yeah (laughs) about not having not having a proper enemy and how this isn't working and he's gonna kill himself he's gonna end his life oh yeah he goes i'm gonna end my life and he goes don't stop me smee and smee goes are you getting dramatic again and like he goes he's like he grabs a pistol and it's not a small pistol his hand is like a half yard away from his uh, and he goes, don't stop me, Smee. Do not try to stop me, Smee. Smee, don't stop me, Smee. Try to stop me, Smee. Smee, <laughs> I'm trying to kill myself. And like they run <laughs> over the middle and it fires. And, and Dr. Hook goes, Smee, how dare you try to wrestle me? And he goes, I'm sorry, Captain. It'll never happen again. Now let's put this down. And he like picks up the <laughs> with his thumb and pointer finger and he's just like holding it like that and he puts it down and he goes let's get you into bed <laughs> and like takes his shoes off and opens up a drawer and there's 12 different like it's all the same shoe it's like he <laughs> this man has a shoe for every day of the week <laughs> and they're all the same and he like takes like he doesn't 
he doesn't take his hat off, his hat, uh, his uh, wig off. I don't think. No, we we don't see him take <laughs> off the wig to like the ending. The end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he just like puts him to sleep. And there's a lot of mirrors in his bed because he's like you know self-absorbed but then <laughs> i'm just in... gonna say we all need a friend likes me yeah, yeah. Like... but <laughs> also not because in the end when like shit's going bad smee's like time to look out for number one i'm stealing the silver <laughs> and like just takes a bag of stuff and just is like da, 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 da. like i'm gonna Pocket get out stuff. it's like he's gonna fucking burst at the seams yeah yeah he's like i gotta get out of here but i mean can I... you blame him no. Can you blame him at that point? No, you absolutely cannot. Nah. <laughs> take, take, grab and run. <laughs> grab and run. It's just like, hey, uh, I gotta go, but uh, I'm taking my back pay for everything I'm owed. And then just <laughs> gets on out. But like, <laughs> Smee comes up with the idea to like, how do you really hurt Peter Pan? You don't just kill him, but you make his kids love Captain Hook. So they're That's like right. trying to like indoctrinate the kids and it's not working on Maggie because she's like seeing through this shit because she remembers home. But it's like slowly working on Jack because uh, what we said earlier with like, you know, Robin Williams wasn't like being a good parent in this film because he was working all the time. And Jack was just like, I wanted you to come to my baseball game. It wasn't that hard. Uh, and then then they have the eating scene where in the end uh rufio throws a coconut at like robin williams head and one of the lost boys goes like hey peter and like throws him a sword <laughs> and like he cuts the coconut in two <clears throat> and they're like peter's back or something like that and he's like yeah i'm i'm, I'm here I'm, I am indeed uh, currently present. Um, He's back. He's back. So I'm just going to point out your guys' impression of these children because it's hilarious. <laughs> but have you guys ever seen Eight Crazy Nights with Adam Sandler and the little yeah. man? Yeah. <laughs> you guys sound just like that guy when you're like, He's back. It's just He's fucking back. hilarious. Peter Pan um, is back. I can't believe he's back. He just needs to fly. And then he's back. <laughs> but I and love then, it. I love it. Like, the next scene I remember is Maggie singing and all of the pirates are, like, gathered around. And then it cuts to, like, the morning and mm -hmm. Robin Williams' watch that he gave to Jack, which Jack has, it's a pocket watch, right? Mm -hmm. Is ticking. And Dustin Hoffman's mustache is twitching <laughs> oh, yeah. to the ticking. Which is an amazing scene. It's just so good. Uh, tick, 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 tick. And he wakes up and he's just like uh, uh, incredibly afraid. He also, he, uh, Captain Hook sleep. He has a hook in his, for a hand, obviously, right? And he sleeps with a piece of cork on the end of the hook and a uh, satin uh, cloth tube over the hook so he doesn't scratch himself. He <laughs> could just take the hook off. Yeah, he could. It comes <laughs> off, but he sleeps with it on. I think that was just a really funny thing to do, right? Putting the cork he, on the end? <laughs> yeah, he put, he put the cork and then the satin like sleeve uh, <laughs> oh yeah, and like Smee, is that crocodile back from the dead? <laughs> tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. He's just like, is that a clock? And he's about to like stab him, and Smee <laughs> jumps in, and Smee jumps in, and he's just like, uh, <clears throat> that that croc's been dead for years, Captain. You had him stuffed, <laughs> like. <laughs> And that's when they start smashing the pump, the pumpkins. They start smashing the clocks. Yeah, the smashing yep. scene is amazing. Oh, he just like did, 
because something starts ticking and he just goes, Do you hear that? And he just starts smashing everything. And Smee goes, There's nothing left to tick. And he just <laughs> did bashing clocks. And he like brings up one like alarm clock from a famous pirate. And he goes like, I smashed this clock when I sliced him into end or something like that. And I'm just like, okay, so we really hate clocks. Got it. <laughs> um, and he and Jack eventually like smashes his pocket watch is like a this is for like not showing up to uh my damn baseball games or whatever and boom he's he's part of the uh the pirate crew uh and what like, i like is they they really briefly put it into your mind on what happened to his hand they didn't have to go into like a full detail of like why he lost his hand or anything like that. They're just like, oh yeah, here's and and the clock is part of it, you know. Like it, I don't know. I I just like that they they fill you in without giving you a whole lot of information at once. So you kind of fill in the blanks of like, how did he fight this crocodile and lose his hand? Like yeah, you get to use your own imagination. So imagination. Like and, and I think um, and, and after the clock scene, that's when uh. They uh, they cre- create his baseball game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he goes onto the ship to like uh, uh, was he staking it out, trying to find out like get some intel or whatever. Yeah, no, it's actually just a game that the Lost Boys are doing as part of like his training, because he he learns how to fly. Right. Wait, does he know how to I fly th- yet? No, I don't think. No, so. I don't. I don't think he no, does he know how to fly yet. yet. I think it's after so the scene. Yeah, he doesn't know how to fly yet, so he knows how to like play games, and he and he kind of like remembers what being a lost boy is like, right? But he doesn't know right. how to fly, and he doesn't know how to crow yet. And apparently, the crowing is vital. Um, mm-hmm. The flying is actually important, but he, the crowing is vital. And so they're like, if we play the game, um, by playing the game of stealing what's his uh, captain hooks uh hook then you'll crow and then you'll be able to fly so you've got to do that they show up to the baseball game and my favorite line is uh dustin hoffman (laughs) as captain hook turns to one of these women who are clearly prostitute well sex workers prostitute has negative connotations clearly sex workers and says confound it drusilla glove me the game is about to start and she (laughs) takes his hook off and puts a a baseball glove on (laughs) and he goes yeah but it's not just a baseball glove it's like a baseball glove on a stick so he's like yes and like puts the hook next to him and Robin Williams could have stolen the hook at any point, but uh, he doesn't. He he in the end says, "I don't like this game." My uh, favorite part is when. He came back from the dead. He fought the fish, guys. He the fought fish the man fish. Lives, <laughs> guys in chat. The fish man lives. We, I believe we caught the fish, guys. I believe we caught yeah, the I fish. Did, I, I started feeling a bit better while I was listening in. <laughs> so yeah, I'm jumping on. I'm still, I'm still, still dealing with it, but I'm, I'm a little bit better that I can get up. Uh, um, so I, w- I was going to say my favorite part in that scene was when <laughs> the guy that's on first starts to steal second. And then oh. the catcher shoots him, and then Captain Hook goes saying like, uh, "No, we're we're gonna be playing it by Master Jack's rules." And he sits back down. Such a dangerous sport baseball is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he shoots him in the back, doesn't he? He's stealing yeah. second. He like grabs him. And he just shoots the guy like right in the middle of the base path. <laughs> and, Hook, and Hook yells, "Bad form!" <laughs> <laughs> Bad form. We're playing this by Master Jock's rules. Terribly violent game baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I remember when I was because I did I did watch it today in case of like I felt better enough to to get on, but uh, like when that part came up, I was like I 
I just happened to be standing up. I was happy. I just, I just fucking fell on the floor laughing. I don't know why. <laughs> that part really just got me. I think it's because I've just been watching a lot of baseball highlights for some reason. I don't know why. I just do from time to time, and I, it was just really, really hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And then Rob, but that's where Rob, Rob Williams sees uh, when uh, when the when his son won the game, the big game. He saw. He sees like everyone's cheering, and he's seen Hook as a new father figure, and and that's when Robin Williams like what? And that's when he gets sad, and then and then he just leaves. He leaves, and that's when he. But fa- and then the movie ends. That's just how the it is. That's it. Uh, <laughs> and, actually, and, and actually, it's really depressing because Jack uh, grows up to be uh, Captain Hook uh, because. Uh, Smee and it actually goes to... into a spinoff where yeah. Jack becomes ca- becomes another pirate for Captain Hook to fight, and it becomes like this whole thing. Uh, it it just turns into Pirates of the Caribbean six, <laughs> but <laughs> Pirates Pirates of the Caribbean six. Uh, do you remember With the Baby hook? Jones. Yeah, the hook. We got a hook. Uh, hook. The hook. Disney's hook. Hook. That's the whole name of the title. Uh, <laughs> Also, the Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> That's yeah, where this all this takes a, place in. <laughs> this is a crossover episode where uh, the pirates uh, also go to Westeros. Uh, it's a whole thing. <laughs> and then for some reason... It is not fit for Disney. And, for, and at the end of the movie, at the end of that movie, that's when Daenerys burns their entire ship and the, all the characters in Hook die. They're all dead, except, except for ex- except for except for Hook. He's has third the green burns, and he's like, "I will get the queen one day." Curse you, Daenerys! You're my new enemy. And then he goes, "My name's Laserface." No, I'm just kidding. That's another crossover uh, to another reference. Hi, everybody in chat. Um, anyway, oh gosh. Uh, oh man. Um, so, uh, trying to remember what happens next onto the to the film. Uh, oh, he tries. Uh, he has. To, he tries to learn how to fly. So he gets real sad after the game, and it just basically cuts to him trying to fly and trying to think of happy thoughts. And oh yeah, that's where, like that's that where he's. Um, Isn't that because he got he got Maggie's teddy bear from her or something, right? He, I guess. Yeah, he, like he went to the place that I believe he that was found his, his place? old apartment complex. <laughs> um, I mean, it pretty much is. Yeah. <laughs> so he found his old apartment complex and was able to get inside and look around and saw Tinkerbell dressed up in a very in a, nice outfit. Yeah. Um, which I was like, very what's going Julia on? Ro- very lovely Julia Roberts in in a ver- in a very nice dress. Uh, very nice. You know, it starts starts talking to him about like, this was your place. This is everything. Do you remember any of it now? And then he starts to remember things like, oh, that's where that's where Wendy sat, and uh, but but the chair was not here. It was over there. Um, and then like then that's when he yes that's when he discovers Teddy. And then he starts to think about, I think he starts to think about his family, and then that's what oh, yeah. ca- gets him to fly, specifically his yeah. son Jack, because he remembers his past. Which that's the part that kind of was like kind of weird for me, where it's like, oh, it's the past, and he's a baby, and as his mom and the and this other woman they're talking, they're like, oh, la, 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 la. and then Pete Robin Wi- that's, baby, that's exactly <laughs> how they talked, and baby and baby <laughs> Robin Williams fall goes down the hill in the crib. And it, it, he says that he runs away, and I'm like, oh, he ran away as a baby. And then he's in the middle of, like, some concrete stuff as a baby, and uh, he's crying in the rain. I was like, when, I was, when <laughs> that happened, I was like, oh, my God, the poor, like, poor child. Like, they had to put him in the middle of, of a concrete floor and are just pouring water over a baby. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that baby cried in real life. Maybe that like... knew too much. And then, and that's when, and Tinkerbell finds Peter Pan, baby Robin Williams, and flies him up into the Neverland. <laughs> and then one day, when he's a bit, when he was a little bit grown up as a kid, he tries to go back home. But then he note he he notices his parents got a new baby, and they forgot about baby Robin Williams, and so he got sad, and he went, uh, he flew away, and that's how we found Wendy's house. 
And then that's uh, and that's how we started the tale on Peter Pan coming to get to take children in their sleep, which is really dark when you actually read more into what the story is about. <laughs> right. And also, also if you think about it, think about the '90s filming time where it was okay to waterboard an infant. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, Tinkerbell's trying to put over a leaf over his head. Nope, you can still see the water dripping on his face. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, fuck. Uh, Tinkerbell just charged for war crimes. Uh, well, I mean, and then, and then, and then, like, years later, like, he's always going there, like, every year, and then, like, you get to that part where he's, like, a little bit more older, and he sees, uh, he sees Wendy as an old woman. This is after she got her company at Wendy's. And started making the square burgers, <laughs> and and then he's all like, "What's going on?" And and she's like, and he's like, and he's I guess somehow he magically he's like he really likes uh, uh Wendy's granddaughter, and uh, he's like, "I will give her a kiss," and she's like, "No, I don't want her to. I don't want her to bear the burden like I do." He's like, "Not like that. I'm gonna give her an but actual I kiss." And then he goes. I mean, to be fair, he's a kid. <laughs> he gets hey, you know what? Part he that tries to. Like, so good. But he's so good. Gave that man amnesia. <laughs> Completely forgot his childhood. Yeah. He goes in for the kiss while Wendy's granddaughter is sleeping. And then you see Tinkerbell come out of the window. And this Gloria, is where. And this. Is her name. And this is where you see Tinkerbell getting real jealous because she was and, real jealous because she sees Peter Pan kissing the sleeping girl. And then she's like, what? And, and, and Well, it was a jealousy thing, but I think she also was aware that once he had a kiss with a real human being, he was no longer going to be a child and he was going to start aging. Yeah. So I think yeah, that's because what triggered his aging process. Yeah, because the next scene is when he becomes a dad. Yeah. Right. Like, immediately right next the next one. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but, until you until you pass the innocence of not having, like, a, a, a real kiss with a human being, you're supposed to stay a child forever, <laughs> according to this movie. <laughs> quarter <laughs> and then that's where he remembers like his family and that's where he starts to fly and he's like you yep. can fly he can fly he can talk and then he flies but away. He, can talk. <laughs> he he goes he, he, he flies up in the thing and he's like yeah and then everyone sees he's like he can fly he can fly this man can i want to come in I want to commend them back then because the flying scene with the, you know, obviously it was on, you know, suspension and stuff like that. But back then in the 90s to make it look so good, oh, that fly yeah. scene was done really well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Based on the technology that they had available to them. I like it's I you could like see that it's like and they're like, yeah, they use suspension wires, but there's also sometimes where you could see them like, oh, they just they kind of put them over a green screen or something like that and yeah. kind of move them around. And it's like, right. uh, yeah, and, but yeah, at the time, it's like, oh, yeah, no, that looks really great. And even I was thinking the same thing when watching this. I'm like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of good stuff in here for 1991. Yeah, that's and what happens. Right. Like, and I mean, that's what happens when, like, Spielberg's a part of it. Like, you get a lot yeah, of good stuff. I'm trying to remember, when did Jurassic Park came out? Was it 92 or was it 1990? Oh, uh, millions of years ago, Robert. See, the Jurassic <laughs> Age was a long time ago. Um, during the Jurassic Age, uh, the uh, world was warmer, and so oh large lizard-type creatures such as uh, uh, Tyrannosaurus the Rex and... Uh, the movie came uh, out in 1993. The, uh, uh, we don't want to be we don't want to be confused with Craigerford Jones and the big ass lizard creatures. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Robin, I don't want you to use the slang title of this movie. All right? Yeah, that's what everyone knows it as. The title is Craigerford Jones and the not so safe big ass lizard resort. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's called. Okay. It came out in '95. Or earlier, I don't it came remember. out in '93. <laughs> Maybe yeah, it came out in '93, and Spielberg stole a lot of his themes from it. <laughs> um, for example, the wrapping large dinosaurs, which were actually rats. <laughs> they were rats. The wrapping rats. Wrapping. Uh, but we oh don't, this, God. but we're not talking about Craig for Jones. This, this, uh, that's not the, the movie we're talking about. We're talking about hook, by the way, if y'all want to learn more about Craig for Jones and the not so safe, big ass lizard <laughs> resort, I would recommend, uh, I would recommend going, uh, 
to all the way back all the way to... back to actually actually remember i tested this uh if you type in craig i'm pretty sure this is still oh, right craig yeah. jones jones if you type in craig jones we do show up or we used to uh, yeah we used to show up on google at, yeah uh, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Because one of the episodes, one of the episodes had Craig for Jones in the yes. Description. If you type in Craig for Jones, and I'll type that in chat right now. <laughs> if you type in Craig for Jones, we pop up. Okay, if you type in Craig for Jones, uh, yeah, we pop up. Yeah, I'm Google. The Grand yeah. Slam episode 10, YouTube. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Give that a watch. Uh, it's it's fun. Uh, not right now. You're watching us right now. Don't yeah. you, don't don't fucking. You're staying with the girl who brought you to the dance. All right. Uh, you're dancing with the girl you brung. We're the anyway, first result. Uh, the first result yeah. is Craigerford Jones. All right, that's us. All right, so back to Hook because we're we're in the home stretch here. Um, I'm switching over. So Come he on. he finds the apartment. He talks yeah. to Tink. He remembers that he's his father. He learns how to fly. Sorry. Uh, Teach grows up to be. Uh, I mean, T Tink like. Oh yeah, for, turns for, into a, real a regular person. size <laughs> woman. For a, uh, for a while, and then and like she kisses Robin Williams, she and go, she's like, Robin yes. Williams, and she says to Robin Williams, "I love ya," and he goes, "I love, I you. love Moira and my kids." She said, like, "He goes, well, you've got to rescue them," and 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 they go, "Oh yeah, right." Anyway, and then she she then Tink uh <laughs> shrinks back to regular Tinkerbell size. Was that a baseball reference? Home stretch? No, it wasn't. But thank you for thinking I'm that smart. <laughs> um, so she shrinks back down. <laughs> she, God damn it. She shrinks back down to the regular Tinkerbell yeah. size and she's like, well, go kill him. Anyway. She, she thought that. Kill them. Them. Rescue <laughs> your kids. Rescue your um, kids. Maybe leave your wife for me, please. <laughs> Maybe leave your wife for me. Maybe when I stay here forever. Maybe I, I was thinking. I was thinking. I'm like, I was thinking the way she would say, "Leave your bitch of a wife for me, please." Oh my God. And he's all like, "Whoa, no, never mind. I'm gonna go see my kids." <laughs> oh, never mind. I gotta see my kids. kids. I gotta rush to my manager. We're in England. My auntie Wendy's gonna be over there. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, I can't. I can't tell her that I was in Never Neverland and I had sex with a pixie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you ever had sex with a pixie? It's amazing. Kicking, kicking glitter off of his eyebrows and stuff. Oh. <laughs> Peter, why do you smell like a, like a, like a pixie? Why did she, why why did she, 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 you hear why about did it? she oh my become God. Lois? Lois, <laughs> Peter, I'm having an episode. Oh my I'm, <laughs> I'm from the film Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> They're called tits and tits. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> All right, oh this God. is too much. So, so what happens is they she he, he commits to go and rescuing his kid. Uh, then it cuts to the scene where the lost boys are preparing for war, and so. We go to war. Uh, that's a Pirates of the Caribbean reference, but pirates make sense. They're, yeah. they're, they're all and they're all putting on like things that are not armor. Uh, it's like no. bamboo pieces and what looks to be just cobwebs and like. Well, no, no, it was attached to cobwebs. It was some. It was some wooden pl plating, but like it was just attached to cobwebs, so it easily came off of, of it. And it just adds to the effect, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But I was gonna, like, but they gotta do what they got. They gotta work with what they got. I mean, yeah. Hey, at least they weren't fighting like some like you know like twenty first century pirates that have like 
<laughs> like their, their armor, <laughs> their armor wouldn't work. Like cyber hackers oh, no. or Somali pirates. I was gonna say, <laughs> you see, they're fighting on on the on Captain Hook's boat, and then everyone, you hear like somebody's like, "Wait, what is that in the distance?" They look into it. Oh no, Captain Hook says. It's the Somali pirates. <laughs> I'm the captain now. It's the real one. <laughs> it's the real one. <laughs> They're on to us. Oh no! <laughs> our our feathers can... and lace are no match for their literal bazooka. Forty-sevens. <laughs> <Like eight>, <laughs> but the, but the last words are like, we can do it. We could do it. I cut to next shot. To yeah, I was about to say. No, it's not even them getting shot. Next cuts to next scene. They're already dead on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> they're just floating. This is going to be very dark. Uh, they're just floating in the ocean, and the I'm... fat one. The, the the fat one, and we all know who the fat one is. The fat <laughs> one's just like bobbing around, going, "Man, this was unexpected. Unexpected." Yes. <laughs> un 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 Oh, now I can't say it. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this was unexpectedly dark. He's <laughs> like, fine, by the way. He's just like it's like it's like he's he's just a fat kid at a lazy river. So he's just like this was unexpected. Hey, dark. Edgar, Edgar, make sure to put um, whatever I'm going on it on it on it. Just put in like a a a uh, a record player skipping. <laughs> right next, right underneath my picture in editing, like <laughs> like oh, a, just a record. I'll put a little DJ. Hey, 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 hey! It's a remix. A remix. Remix. So they go fight. <laughs> right. so they go. They go to. The, they all go to the ship, and they're all ready for a war. Oh, and, like, oh. the war happens, and there's some funny moments, you know, har har hee hee. Uh, oh. The fat kid, like, doubles over on himself to become a ball and just, like, rolls people over. Also, he slams his foot down on a plank and, like, bops a guy into the air, which is yeah. fun. <laughs> and everybody else does some fun things. I mean, what are I, if y'all have some some fun examples from the... From I just, the, my, I just like my how the, favorite. Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, go, go, go for it, go for it. You might well, have the same one. I was gonna say I liked how the 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 fat kid like just turns into a ball. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I was going. For. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when they just roll him down the stairs, like <laughs> <laughs> all out, every single one of them. <laughs> I really Strike. liked how they. I really liked how they edited it, uh, like later on, where he kind of runs up to the camera, ducks, and the camera pans to it going down like the way from the ship to the to the dock, and he's already in that ball. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I mean that that's just that was just really clever that they like it's obvious that that's what they that's what they did. I know how obvious it is, but it's just just clever. And it's like, oh yeah, right. just duck down. Yeah. And we'll move the camera over, and the ball. It's just the ball is already there, and it just goes. <laughs> yep. Oh man, that no. that, ball. that was definitely the best part of the fight scene. I think yeah. in my whole like, sure, there's the yeet the guy with the plank, but you get that kid rolled up in a ball and just sending it. I've also done a couple of like the where they are nows, and like that guy did not age. By the way, the I, the kid that they use is the ball. Oh, he has not uh, aged one bit. He, he didn't. He, he didn't end up like Goldberg, didn't he? Did he from the Mighty oh, God? Oh, 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 God. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, God, I, oh, 
there oh, speaking of that really quick sidebar uh there's a they're making a, a, a t- mini series tv show on disney plus about the mighty ducks and emilio estevez is coming back to play as coach bombay again no Which, way. yeah yeah i was like oh shit nice can't wait to i can't wait is to that, watch it i'm glad that does anybody else want emilio estevez's name get brought up i'm like yes can't have it any other way i don't think i don't know if it uh-oh Robin, you totally <laughs> just like walked Robin. right over our guest. But I know, oh, I don't mind. Talking, I don't mind. But Robin, no, like, at one point, up. Robin was like talking I... and then just stopped. <laughs> he was just like, and then anyway. Oh. oh, did I? Did I? Did the, the thing kind of glitched out again? That happens from it time to time glitched. on my end. It's yeah, okay. the, it's okay. not. It's not so much that it. Uh, it's not a glitch. It's a feature. Um, so... <laughs> but everybody, does anybody need... immediately think when they hear Emilio Estevez, do they immediately go back to the night at the Roxbury when they're talking yeah. about the payphone? And he's like, and I was like, Emilio! And he Emilio! Just... He was right there, I swear to God. Right? Oh, hand to God. I, <laughs> like, I know that me and my brother, we always, we from th- like in the past, we used to do that. Just say that. Like, Emilio! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but that's not asking he's going to be making a new one. Uh, or he's coming back. For there the, he is the in the chat. Emilio! <laughs> oh, step <laughs> on. Um, but, yeah, no, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, for that show. Anyway, back to Hook. <laughs> um, oh, uh, fighting... The, the lost boys do stuff they've got weird weapons where it's just kid it's just fucking ball. paint kid turns into ball go go <laughs> gadget ball go go um, gadget <laughs> big ball and <laughs> then rufio fights captain hook because captain hook like taunts him into doing it and he just goes rufio rufio and they start fighting and um it, it it doesn't end well. Rufio no, fucking it dies. Definitely, definitely <laughs> the saddest part of the whole movie. Right yeah, like, Rufio fucking died. It's yeah, very sad. Really he was my favorite person in the whole movie, so I was like, what? But he he I, went out I, like you know he faced he faced Captain Hook head on and didn't even like stutter. He was like, no, I don't even care. Like, you can beat my ass, but I'm a I'm a I'm gonna go down with a fight. Yeah, so. that kid's got some balls. Let's put it that way. Like, and he, some hair. And yeah. some hair. <laughs> and he Rufio's came in with an hair. entrance when they like. If we backtrack to when Rufio made his first appearance, he comes in on like a skateboard, and he's like, "Oh a yeah. badass!" He's just coming out like he comes in oh, on a skateboard that's a tr- that's attached to like a rail system. Which yeah. I'm like, I believe it's like, is that all that is for? Just for that <laughs> first that entrance? Thing? Yeah. Well, because like. Hey. It, it's all no one else could house. fly, so Rufio uh, was like, point. "Hey, we can't fly, but I can make us some goddamn wheels." Hey, let's have a whole track system. Yeah, Rufio <laughs> died. Yeah, like I he, thought, I'm like, "Whoa, they killed him." Yeah, I mean, like yeah. they straight up killed this man. <laughs> I mean, they also straight up killed a lot of pirates too. And I'm just like, I think that's the part that gets me is like, "Oh, this is a kid show, and they're literally killing people." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, or, not a kid, not a show, but <laughs> yeah, thanks, <yeah>. Spielberg. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so Rufio dies. Well, oh, hang on, wait. Rufio fucking dies, dies, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Robin Williams as Peter Pan is going to fight Captain Hook, and then, uh, what's his son? Jack. Jack. It's Jack. Jack. Jack, Jack, yeah. like, takes off his wig and hat and just goes like, Dad, I want to go home. Yeah. And, like, decides he doesn't want to be a pirate. So, yay, the redemption arc. Yeah. The also, way he, the, but, but, but to backtrack a bit, the, the reason he, he got, he, rede- he uh, Jack re- did the redemption stuff was because uh, Rufio at, at the end, before he dies, the last like, I wish I had a father like you, Mr. Robin Williams. That's what he says. And then it's he actually says what he Mr. says Robin in the movie. Williams. He he, he refused to say Peter Pan. He goes, <laughs> Mr. Robin Williams. <laughs> and then like, he goes, I want to go home. Cut to, you know, he uh, Peter Pan takes his son and he flies. 
and like goes to the Lost Boys and mm. Maggie, his daughter, shows up and everybody's <laughs> leaving and Smee comes hauling ass out of the office with a bag full of loot <laughs> and is just fucking getting out while the getting's good and then Captain Hook goes Smee follow me stairs and like he turns right the fuck around and he goes I was just moving your personals and like <laughs> fucking taking off with them <laughs> and then Captain Hook's like I swear to god wherever you go your children's children's children are gonna have notes from Captain They're Hook gonna deal with me cause I'm yeah. gonna Kidnap I'm gonna them and turn them I'm into gonna, pirates. I'm going to steal your children and bring them to a different universe <laughs> where there are three moons, apparently. <laughs> three moons. Three which, moons. With three moons that look exactly the same. But um, <laughs> that they're is one thing that I sizes. There are different sizes, yeah. But like, but like, it, it's it's just it's our moon. It's Image. three of it's our Image. moons. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably okay. they're they're probably triplets. You know. <laughs> I just want to say this. Uh, the other two Nate. moons are hiding exactly be are hiding behind the original moon, so we don't see it. But when you go to Neverland, you, you can see it. Um, <laughs> there we go. I f fi fixed it. it um, <laughs> I figured it out. Boom. <laughs> Hot take. Um, Dustin Hoffman as uh, Captain Hook in this movie could get it. He is very he was, well groomed. He is, and pretty, it like, works. I remember, like the first time watching it, like I don't know how long ago it was, but like, but every time I watch it, even from the first time, I was just like, I can't believe that's Dustin Hoffman. Like he, to me, he looks unrecognizable from time to time. But then when you start to look further into it, it's like, oh no, I can see it. It's his chin and his <laughs> his big jowls, nose, his nose, <laughs> yeah, <Big> nose. jowls. <laughs> Do well, no, I like, mean, I assume his eyes are the same, but I've never really looked at Dustin Hoffman's eyes. If that's that's kind of strange, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> like his but, eyes specifically. Like I'm sure they aren't somebody else's. I'm sure he didn't like go out and borrow some different oh, eyes. Yeah. Any anyway, I'm just saying that in this movie he could get it. I know he's the villain, but like he I just I just it. I just knew Dustin Hoffman as Master Shipu. That's who I know. Oh for. my god, <laughs> Master Shifu. Um Okay, so then they th okay, blah 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 blah, I'll fucking get your children for the rest of the time. And then, then they fight like, and know. they actually get to fight cuz yeah. uh they get their little the rest of their war type thing. And every time their swords hit in the beginning, it's like sparks, oh, yeah. but it's like kind of shitty like effects that you know that they were fake <laughs> right. because and the sounds the sounds were, were very tinky they didn't sound yeah like... tink 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 yeah, yeah. Tink. it was like playing two pieces of glass together not two pieces of metal almost you know was... <laughs> yeah and also mm -hmm. captain hook's using a rapier and uh <clears throat> robin williams is using a bronze age sword like i don't know something about that is just well i mean i think it's supposed to be sticking with like the shape of what it was in the stories for peter pan because i think he does use mm -hmm. that kind of a sword but um so like they're fighting yeah <laughs> and um they fight near the big crocodile guy which i didn't i didn't realize that was there until you know it it eats uh Doctor, uh, Doctor, Doctor, Hook. <laughs> Doctor, 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 Doctor Hook. the great. By That's the way, Doctor Doctor I do not want to go see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, man. Doctor Hook is a great band from the seventies. I got stoned and I missed it. It's a good song. Anyway, could you, um, could you imagine getting your forty-year prostate exam by a doctor named Doctor Hook? Oh, I would not. So no, I would oh, just no. bend on over. Shing. He We're still puts. He still puts the uh, the rubber glove on his hook. <laughs> <laughs> by, this time, by this time, technology's advanced. They've got hook condoms, so they just Whoa. run that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's right, so. Uh, Drop your pants. Uh, <laughs> my name is Dr. Hook. I need you to drop your pants. And no, uh, for the question, yes, my hook is going to be the one going up your prostate. 
And, and just for science, you know, I did, I'm going to need you to face me while we do this yeah, procedure. face me. <laughs> Don't ask how I'm going to have your for hand in there. Science. I need you to face me. For science reasons. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so then they start fighting. Uh, I, I forgot what happens, but I know there was a point where, like, they take, take off his wig. Uh, Captain Hook's oh. wig. No, like well, at, the, at was... one point, um, they're fighting. Uh, Robin Williams actually disarms Captain Hook, and he falls backwards. Oh, yeah. Captain Hook, like, is on the ground, two swords to his throat. Robin Williams gives him back his sword, and, like, he's starting to get... And Captain Hook starts to get up, and then, like, reaches over with his hook, and he's smiling at Robin Williams, and then just, like... Cuts him across the arm, to which Jack, Robin Williams' son, therefore yells, bad form, and starts to, like, walk up, uh, which is very kind of Dr. Hook of uh, Captain Hook. Now you've got oh, me! Oh, 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 Captain. Dr. Hook was a one-eyed man who sang songs about drugs and getting famous. Um, <laughs> all right. So, anyway, then... When after he cuts Robin Williams' arm, all of the Lost Boys start holding up clocks, <laughs> and they're ticking, and they're ticking, and he's very much afraid. Uh, and then tick tock, tick tock. Who's afraid of an old dead croc? <laughs> and they keep fighting. Um, and that's right. Captain Hook loses like a, some of his form and just starts making kind of like some of it's like semi wild cuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he gets unwigged. And That's right. But doesn't Peter give him his wig back? Yeah, he gives him his wig yes. back and he tells him to leave. He's like, leave Neverland. I don't want to see you here ever again. And then he's all like, okay. And that's when like the surprise cut comes out. That's right. That's he's just out. like, give me my dignity. You took my hand. You owe me something. And he like gives him his wig back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And, and then I oh man I'm and then that's when yeah like I think Captain Hook tries to attack him again yeah but then, then he, he hits the 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 little he like parries it yeah he hits like the wooden thing that where the croc is and that's how the croc like falls and it goes and apparently the yeah. croc is still alive it kind of looked like it somehow and then somehow yeah, it's still alive they made the noise like he was still alive um and when Hook. When the, when the crocodile fell on top of Captain Hook, not Doctor Hook, by the way, um, and when it falls on top of him, he just disappeared. <laughs> yeah. After that, and the croc burps yeah. too. So, He's like, burp. and it burps. Yeah. Yeah. So then now and we can say that's when Captain Hook is dead, as well as the crocodile, yeah. because it just right. decides to not move. And that's how it just so, hits somebody. <laughs> and since we since we did kind of skip over it a little bit, or at least I don't remember bringing it up, the hook, for the people that are listening, the, the crocodile, Peter cut his hand off and fed it to the crocodile. And mm. that's why the crocodile is such a big fear of his, and why when he killed the crocodile, he got his big trophy, and the last trophy he needed to do was to kill Peter Pan himself. Yeah, so, was like an, another thing was that like he, like the croc ate like a clock yeah so every so time he heard it every time he heard a clock that's when he was he starts like freaking out because it's like oh god there it's here again it's here and i remember i remember like this is backtracking a bit where like he takes jack to to the museum is what it's called and <laughs> it's just a big museum just filled with destroyed clocks right to the stress room yeah, yeah. like i mean room beat the shit out of clocks <laughs> C -c -c um, clocks yes <laughs> clocks and so, so you know then the pirate's dead some... pirate's dead yeah. <laughs> excuse me sorry <laughs> <laughs> also when 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 captain hook dies um when the when the crocodile eats him he yells i want my mommy which is oh, yeah really interesting because like a lot of the lost boys think about their mothers too well and that's one of the only memories that like peter has of like being very young is like oh his mom 
and it's like I don't know. It, there's there's kind of a strange connection there. Part of the part of the lore that's not brought up in the movie is that Captain Hook actually used to be one of the Lost Boys in a different version of peter pan oh, and so i was... think they kind of brought that over because pe- when they grew up when the lost boys grew up they became pirates uh, so, uh, like, there, had, there had to be there had to have been some kind of connection there's like then it, it brings up like yeah like why why is captain hook there in the first place like oh well because he was a lost boy um right just like but, how uh, robin williams is gonna in the sequel he turns into mrs doubtfire Right. <laughs> um, when he goes back to the real world, uh, yeah. but he when he goes back, he's 13 again, because yeah. uh, that's what happens. Uh, any, anyway, that so let's finish out this movie. Uh, they they all they, they all walk around the crocodile saying no hook, no hook, yeah, no hook, uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then the kids are both like, we want to go home, and. So Peter Pan's like, I can't stay and play. We gotta go, and Tinkerbell sprinkles them with pixie dust. I got dust. a wife. I gotta go home. <laughs> I got a wife, hey, Tinkerbell. Uh, I gotta go back to my wife. Um, <laughs> you hear that, Tinkerbell? <laughs> my <laughs> wife. It's like rubbing it in their face. Like I have a wife. What do you have? <laughs> he, he, he rubs it in Tinkerbell's face. <laughs> <laughs> the Jesus. pirates. The pirates are just like, well, we ain't got no captain. And we ain't got no money, but uh, we do have a drive to murder. <laughs> the moment you're gone, we're going to kill these kids. Oh, my God. I can never so, leave. <laughs> so now that, we're, now that we're wrapping up the movie, we totally forgot. The the chubby kid, I believe, or it was one of the other little kids, actually gave Robin William back uh, Toodles' as marbles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah! Oh, that is yeah, right! Yeah, that's, coming. that's coming. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I've, oh, no, that happened, didn't it? Yeah, that happened. already, already gotten the yeah. marbles to give him back. Mm-hmm. And yeah. This was back when they were on the Lost Boys Island. And he goes, wow, he really did lose his marbles. And then ah. so I just figured I'd catch us back up before <laughs> yeah. we go back because it's coming again. Um, yeah, that, that is an marble. Speaking that is of a, spe- an important side thing yeah. that happens, and it's like, yeah, yeah. And speaking of the chubby boy, he's the one who's now like the he's like the the main big leader guy. He's in charge now. He's right. in charge. He's yeah. in charge. <laughs> he's <laughs> the, 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 big, the big leader guy. Like you mean he's in charge? You can just say he's in charge. I, I'm the captain now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's in the in the um. That's in like the Peter Two. 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 Oh, that's so good. Two Fio. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that's funny. Um, so okay, basically, uh, Pixie Dust. They go back to the real world. Peter Pan comes back to the real world. Uh, he like shows up. He's outside. Peter, yeah. Pan, P- the kids are inside, but Peter Pan's outside. Robin Williams, he's by a statue, and he's woken up by birds. There's all no, these he's birds. woken up by his cell phone ringing. Yeah. Oh, his cell phone's ringing, and Smee, who is a sweeper, is uh, just like cleaning up bottles. Like, what are you doing, Mike? <laughs> and he says, yeah, "Hello, like- having trouble with the misses." <laughs> you will have by the time you get home <laughs> like like i'm just like wondering because like if if they're trying to make it seem like a dream but then you have tinkerbell is still actually there does that mean that Shmi somehow made it back maybe if, maybe he's just like he was tired of the 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 pirate stuff and then when he sold all this his ass uh stole all the gold and stuff he went to the real world and now he owns a business. Like, well, no, he has to come back to and the that's real how we, world. That's how he became. Can... That's how he became a plumber, and he became Mario. Oh, oh my god, a Mario! Oh my god, he became Mario! I was, Mario! I was, I was, I was the... gonna do Mario, but I was gonna say like that. How else is he gonna come back and to start up a detective agency <laughs> and then help out Toons? Like, let's. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's all that silver he brought back from the Lost Bo- Lost Boy or Neverland. That's and that's yeah. after he that's yeah. after he becomes Mario. So after he got the gold from Hook, he became a plumber. But like after the incident that happened uh, when he was Mario brother, he left Luigi <laughs> and then he became a detective after years. And that's how he became. That's how he grew his uh, American accent. That's that's why we never get a sequel to Mario Brothers because that's what ends it. Anyway, yeah. that's yeah, that's, that's for another podcast. Yeah, I'm sure that is the reason we don't get a sequel to Mario Brothers. Uh-huh. <laughs> and nothing also, to do with a terrible production movie. <laughs> okay. Also, and I have an actual question here. So he wakes up. He sees not Smee, but it's totally Smee, just like sweeping up. Um. Then, then like, there's Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell, and she's like, hey, you know that place where you're, like, between awake and asleep? That's where I'll always love you. And then she just, like, burns away. She just deuces and is out. Yeah. <laughs> is she dead? It's like, peace. Like, what, what, what's the over-under on her just dying? Like, does she die in that moment? And I and... think she just go just goes back to neverland i don't think she that's dies. what i would assume yeah yeah okay unless she just dis- unless she, so. unless she disappears and become and that's how eat pray love the movie starts oh my, oh my god, god. <laughs> Yo, all these how, connections that's how, that's how aaron brockovich starts okay <laughs> um she's just like they're called tits ed anyway um <laughs> Because I hope she isn't dead. I hope she's back in Never Never Land. Because if she died, which it it kind of says she dies, but doesn't really. I don't know. Anyway, because the next thing is like Robin Williams just pops his head over a wall and is just like, wee! And I'm just like, that's not the way to act if your friend just died. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, so then he, Robin Williams like pets the dog and goes inside. Pets and Anna. Yeah. yeah, sees his wife and gets on the phone and tells Brad off. Oh, yeah, Brad he's, 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 he tells him, he's like, and have he you just, ever had that feeling of uh, a sensation of flying? Did you ever want to feel that? Well, here you go right now. And then that's when he throws his phone out the window. Yeah. And hugs Whee. Maggie and Jack and then Toodles. Do you remember Toodles? Oh, <laughs> Toodles <laughs> said, I missed the adventure again, didn't I? And like... I th- Robin Williams goes, I think these belong to you. And it's his bag of marbles. And he goes, see, I did lose my marbles. And, you like, my marbles. <laughs> and then apparently there's pick these nuts in there. And then that's how <laughs> that's how he flies. Like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. He flies away and it's like, oh, well, he's gone. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's no way we're going to get him back now. I just imagine, uh, I just imagine like, it, the, it, like BBC news. <laughs> like, Today news. we learned that a that a very old that a very old man flew off into the sky. It was later reported that he had lost his marbles, but had found them. <laughs> and he had a bag of what we could only believe to be a, a bag of narcotics, which sent him flying very high through the air. And he was saying, "Hook, hook, hook's dead. I've done it, and one for me. I'm off to never, never." Land for the big <laughs> In other words, also please stand clear of by by on the road that's next to Parliament. Uh, <laughs> He's like, also and because- now the weather. Uh, <laughs> uh, the weather that's okay today. There is an uh, as you said, there is an old man, but this old man is on top of the Big Ben. So if you're around the, near the Big Ben, <laughs> be careful. You don't know if you're full or not. He's taking a shit. Uh, just, uh, uh, we, we are not right joking. The, the old oh, man is taking John, a, a shit. Get a shot of this. Get a shot of this. Get a shot of that. <laughs> and the shit falls on the camera. Oh, oh God. We got to <laughs> clean that off. And the, the very last scene of the movie is Toodles just flying past Big Bend. And we assume off to Never Never Land. I don't know. Also, he does the thing where he grabs the spire and like spins around it. And then does yeah. loop de loops. And you also <laughs> notice the uh, the two stars. So it's you know second star to the right and straight on till morning thing, which I'm like, yeah, nice. You got that, <laughs> got that in there to end it. And then it ends. Uh, and then it ends. It ends with Tweedle. And that's the movie flying that to is, the sky. That is the movie. He's flying and... to the sky and terrorizing the UK. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the blitz started. No, I'm just 
Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did want to say one thing that that I thought was really funny. Um, this is back when when Peter first shows up at the Lost Boys hideout, and I don't know if you uh, like I I don't know if you guys uh, talked about this small joke of what Robin Williams said, but they were saying like I'm not a pirate, I'm a lawyer. Kill the lawyers, and then he starts running. I'm not that kind of lawyer. And he starts running. <laughs> oh. Also, in the scene where they're throwing like insults at each other, Rufio and Peter, at one point Robin Williams says, "You're a you're a you're a nearsighted gynecologist." <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just so fucking stupidly funny. <laughs> oh, you're a nearsighted gynecologist, which is another reason this isn't a Disney movie. Um, no, that would never have flown in, in any of Walt's writers, no. <laughs> but, uh, hey, Edgar, um, yes. maybe we should do the ratings. Ah, yes, because that, yeah. that was Hook, ladies and gentlemen. And, of course, since Mr. Botpush, you are our guest today, why don't you give us your overall thoughts and your rating, which our rating system is um, out of five stars. So, what is your overall thoughts and ratings of hook being the first pad podcast that i've ever been on which by the way i've loved the idea of always being on one so the fact that you guys have me i want to just say thank you real quick um you guys <laughs> definitely five stars for me because it was nothing but <laughs>, laughs and all the charisma and like i'm really glad that robin started feeling better too so that he could come in and join in on this because i felt yeah. the energy lift like tenfold so as soon as we had our fourth side to this puzzle like we were doing well with the three of us i enjoyed it but once all four of us were chiming in, it just became that much more fun. And I, I don't know. I'm, I really appreciated it. it. There was a lot that I learned about this movie and I was able to learn. And it was it was great. Thank you, guys. No problem, man. No problem. I, I'm glad that I helped boost up the thing. That makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good energy about you. So. <laughs> uh, you all do, but yeah. <clears throat> all right. So five star for bot push yeah uh mr uh william mr will from south texas this is it this is this is, this is a five star all day long um this is and you know what honestly uh this is five star out of like like pure nostalgia mm -hmm. like this is just like th one of the movies it's that from my childhood it's robin williams mm -hmm. yeah. dustin hoffman Fucking Bob Hoskins, uh, whoever the kids mm -hmm. are. I don't know their names, uh, but they're in other movies. I've seen them in other movies. Ma uh, Dame Maggie Smith as... Dame uh, Maggie Smith as uh, as Professor Snape as Wendy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter, you've gotten old. Where are you, Potter? Uh, Severus anyway. Severus. It's like, uh, like really quick, like it's just that when I saw her in this movie, I'm like, man, she did not change at all when you later see her down the years. Yeah, no, Maggie, no. Maggie Smith has been two thousand years old <laughs> for three thousand years. Like, <laughs> like if people want proof that vampires exist, that's who they need to look at. Yeah, not Betty White. Betty White ages, but yeah. Maggie Smith didn't age at all. From from Wendy to Professor McGonagall, I I feel like they aged her in the Wendy scene or something I, because yeah, mm -hmm. like I she always, looks older there than she does as Professor McGonagall. Yeah, when I first saw her show up, I thought like, wait, is that is that the old lady that's in Titanic that plays uh you know the the, the, the main actress lady in the in the character? I can't remember the character's the name. DiCaprio's you know love interest. Yeah, you know who I, you know who I'm talking about, right? Like, yeah. I, I thought that was I thought that that was her, and then I was like, no, that's that's Maggie Smith. Man, she did not look different at all. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, well, sorry, well, I, I just wanted to bring that up really quick. Uh, well, okay, what was what was your? You said five. I'm yeah. I'm yeah. I'm, nostalgia. Yeah. It's just everybody that's in it. Yeah, like, it's just okay. good. Five star nice. all day. Mr. Robin, what about you, Mr. You know, Robin? I'm surprised. One, one quick interjection there. Yeah. I'm surprised that this is a five star from Will only because it had no musical scene to it. 
and knowing well, him so well. Yeah, but like Robin Williams, you know, here's the th I love Robin Williams and like there aren't any musical scenes in it, but there is this there is the workout montage. That's that's a lot of points that's, a working out montage. That's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm gonna have to join Will and and Bot Push on this. I'm gonna give it a five out of five stars, also. Mm. Um, especially because I was just I was just feeling so bad today. Um, even even uh, like uh, emotionally, I was feeling kind of kind of bad at the yeah. same time too. And this movie just brightened up my day. Um, mm -hmm. And like just watching it, it's just it's just so great. Like having Robin Williams in, in it. And seeing his transformation of be, being like this uptight dad to being the kid that he once was in terms of the character, mm -hmm. it's just it's just so great. It just makes you feel like a kid again, and just it's just a really good movie. So yeah, I gave it a five out of five stars. Nice. Cool. For me, when I first, I'll be honest, when I first uh, was gonna go into the movie, I wasn't really excited to go in because I was like, I don't know about this movie. I'm like, I I, I wasn't. I wasn't feeling it when I first heard of it, but then when I got in, I'm like, oh, I I really enjoyed it. What 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 sold it for me was the the twist they did with Peter Pan, where it's like it's not like like the cartoons or anything of Peter Pan. It's the twist of like, oh, it's an adult Peter Pan. He forgot everything about him, like him being a kid and the adventures he has, and Robin Williams as as Peter Pan. I'm like, yeah, that's it's fucking Robin Williams. I'm gonna fucking love it. Uh, my my only issue is with the love stuff with Tinkerbell. That was just like the weird part for me. I was like that I wasn't vibing. But Hook and like everything else, I'm like it's such a charming movie, and I'm like I can see why there's such a cult following for it. Cause I didn't grow up with this, so there's no nostalgia with this for me. So for me, I would I'm very iffy of what I want to give it. But I for right now, I'm gonna give it a four stars out of five. Right. That's fair for someone never seeing it and coming into it. I could see that. Yeah. And I going back on the fact that they added a love scene in there with Tinkerbell, that was mm -hmm. weird. I feel like they were reaching for one now that you brought that up. Yeah. That like was like they needed a love scene. That part I was just really like, hmm, I don't know. But like everything else, I'm like, I enjoyed the whole ride through. It was like, oh, it was all good. right, well, we gotta have Tinkerbell in there. Uh what are we gonna do with her? I don't know. Uh make a love like line with William. <laughs> all right ted ted with the ideas i like that ted all right <laughs> spielberg on set i like that i like that a lot let's make her kiss uh robin williams do you want to kiss her oh, i don't know i don't know if i want to kiss uh i want to kiss julia julia is, uh, yeah yeah i'll do that yes yeah, sure hey hey fuck her up buttercup <laughs> i'm just kidding hey <laughs> this is not, i'm still doing cocaine hey <laughs> But, Actually, no, I don't think he was in the 90s. I think, uh, I think... This was I during don't... that time when he was trying, where he got in trouble for his coke habit. So then he had to make ah. do stuff to make up money. I'm not even kidding. Like, this is apparently true. He had, Like, the reason why he did movies like Hook, like Mrs. Doubtfire, uh, like Patch Adams, was because, like, it, it was just so he can regain uh, some... Like a little bit of traction, yeah. Because he, oh, I thought you were gonna he say quit because drugs. He had to pay a lot of fines for the coke. Actually, there's a documentary you guys should really do watch, and it's it's a uh, come inside my mind with Robin Williams, I've heard and of it's it's a great documentary. You can rent it on Amazon Prime or you can find it on Netflix, and it's free on Netflix. Um, and it actually shows his start from stardom because he was actually a Juilliard trained actor. Yeah. And, oh, damn. And left that and came onto comedy. And he has one of the fastest comedic minds. I will always say he has because his legacy will never end. Um, but oh, yeah, he's a he man. actually, he but was very. Fast. Yeah. So he, um, his drug addiction actually ended when John Belushi died. Because him and John yeah. Belushi were best friends. Oh, I yeah, they, they hearing about that. He he almost died the same night as John Belushi. Oh shit! Yeah, because they were together. Yeah. yeah. Damn. And like he almost took the same drug as John Belushi overdosed on. Is what I that, that's what I've heard. I, yeah, um, that's that's been that's been in speculation too. Yeah. Oh, damn. Wow. And then but. yeah, then that's how he went off. I you know in a sense yeah went off the wagon from of that, um, mm -hmm. and still did comedy bits, but then it got too out of hand that you know they I, I haven't seen the documentary yet either i've heard 
it's a great documentary um and i've been wanting to watch it um but uh please, please do it um there's he actually died from louis body dementia he actually didn't die from depression or drugs or anything like that there's I a know, huge documentary on how he died from dementia instead it was dementia uh, yeah like because it was it was not just dementia because it was also he was also suffering it was starting to develop parkinson's disease as well Oh, damn. Um, no, Parkinson's was a misdiagnosis. Oh, it was? So Lewy body dementia oh. can be misdiagnosed as Parkinson's and all these other different physical body ailments. But um, I just, the only reason I know this so well is because I literally just watched the documentary on it like three days ago. Wow. So it's, it's his whole wife, it's his doctors, it's all of his family talking about it. Um, I'm very passionate about Robin Williams' work, if you can't tell, because I, I love that man. Um, ever since ever since the probably the first recognizable time that I watched him was probably Aladdin as Genie. Yes. That's the first recognizable that's time. A, that's, what, that's what started uh, with me. Yeah, and oh, since then, like, oh, this oh, man oh. has been, like, my hero, you know, right up there with, like, Jay Muse and stuff like that. Like, just someone I look up to that's in the celebrity eye. Mm -hmm. Um and this man has lived an amazing life. Did you know he was also a very free love type person? Like he was he was heterosexual, but he had very many female sexual partners throughout his life. And mm -hmm. even though he had wives, they were very open to it. And they were like that type of love that we don't want. You see nowadays where it's like open relationships. He had that in like the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Like oh. there wasn't anybody that had their hooks in Robin, which was a, an amazing way to live your life because his mind was always everywhere. So, yeah. and rapid fired faster than any of ours so it's pretty crazy to find out like different little bits and details about their lives so louis body dementia is actually what um mm. what caused his misdiagnosis for parkinson and um the night that he actually passed away he went to bed like a regular time and then he you know obviously didn't come to the next day and that's also in the other documentary that i watched um where they went into his like medical diagnosis so i gotta, I gotta watch the yeah i gotta watch them it's uh, sad. It's sad, but in like a good way because you get yeah. answers. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of. It's kind of like when you were when, when you would watch uh, the documentary uh, "I Am Chris Farley," mm -hmm. which mm. that that one is a, that one's a great documentary if you haven't seen that. Uh, yes, a I, lot, it's I been a while, but I definitely it's a good yeah. one. Yeah, I know they came out with a documentary for Belushi on Showtime called it's called yeah. Belushi, but I, that's another one I need to check out too. Damn. I know that Lori, yeah. uh, who we had on as a guest last episode, uh, she she re she has this book that's specifically about uh, John Belushi's life, mm -hmm. and um, I can't remember the title of the book, but I think that's where I learned about that Robin Williams almost died from that same drug that Belushi died from. So um, speedball, she, she, yeah, yeah, speedball. That's crazy. Well, but of course, ladies and gentlemen, you, if you want to watch Hook or you want to see Hook, uh, you can check it out on Netflix. It's free on Netflix. Or if you don't have Netflix, you can check it on Amazon. You get it free there. Well, not free, but you can rent it there. And of course, we ain't done with the show yet. As always, we always got to end it with our untitled segment idea. So I'm going to put the our untitled segment idea uh, intro. So without further ado, a one, a two, a one, two, three, and... Untitled segment idea, ladies and gentlemen. And since we have Mr. Bot Push as our guest, why don't you start off with uh, the segment? What have you recently watched, seen, or read, or etc., etc., etc.? If that made sense. Or, or, or played. Or, yeah, or played. It can literally be about anything. Anything. What well, um, like something that I'm enjoying, or something that I don't know. I. The, the, the main segment is like anything you've recently like played or watched or read or even listened to. Well, I already went back on the whole Robin Williams documentary, so we won't retouch those. Um, I don't know. The the games that I actually recently been playing have been kind of all over the place, but uh, I don't know. Uh, Overwatch is still still alive and kicking. <laughs> if anybody's <laughs> interested in playing that, somehow it's still going. Overwatch. Um, 
Uh, How yeah. old is Overwatch? How many years has it been out? Ooh. Seven years, I think. Six, Came out in years. 2016, did it? No, yeah. no, no. Is it 2016? Because I remember, I think. Uh, it, let me Google this. Because I remember it won Game of the Year, and it was it was against uh, it was competing, I believe, against Doom 2016. Yeah, yeah May, uh, May 24th, 2016 was the original release for Overwatch. So it has yeah. officially been out for five years. Damn. Um, Damn. In May. And and we're still there. there uh, and then they, they announced Overwatch 2, which I don't know when that's going to come out, but Overwatch. they announced it. Two. So uh, um, it's it's in speculation. Overwatch 2 is supposed to be very similar to a storyline for Overwatch that I've heard. Okay. So um, the multiplayer is going to still be cross uh, as far as I've heard through Blizzard and everything like that. Overwatch 2 is still going to be um, the multiplayer from Overwatch 1 and 2 will be the same. Okay. So it'll be cross platform or cross whatever network. But the story for Overwatch 2 is what what's the big hype for Overwatch 2 mm -hmm. is that you're actually going to find out more origin and more about the heroes that you enjoy to play so much. So. Um, I really yeah, want I don't the really background story for Winston just to be like big monkey, smart brain, <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> big monkey, oh smart brain. Oh my god, the monkey got a light, got, got the fucking electric gun. Run! <laughs> um, another game that I slept on and finally started playing is uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That game mm. is also an amazing story mode game. So if anybody's looking for something to veg out and play, that would be one that I would say. See, like I, I tried to play that. I need to play. I need to try to play it again because, mm -hmm. like, when I started to play it on my PS4, I just, I don't know, I just couldn't get into it. I think the thing, I, I think I know why, and I think Ed Edgar has the same thing about yeah. this. Is we we heard that title it's like oh it's like it's it's like the uh, playstation version of breath of the wild or something like that it's yeah. like there was like a lot of comparisons to it or something like that yeah and then i think i just had that hypeness in my head when i was going in to play it yeah because I I, I I i love i love breath of the wild i think it's a fantastic game for nintendo for for a very long time in all honesty right um it actually like I actually, it's right up there with mm -hmm. Ocarina of Time, my favorite, my favorite uh, one. But, but yeah, like, Ocarina I, of Time I, is definitely my favorite. <laughs> yeah. But like, I could, like, I, I need to try it again. Like, I even, like, uh, I even go, got it. Yeah, on. go into it with a different mindset because yeah. it's definitely good. It's really mm -hmm. good, but you, but because of the hype of the Breath of the Wild to Horizon Zero Dawn, you definitely got to take it away. Yeah. I came to Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm way later like years after it's been out you know yeah. they've already made a port for pc um, oh yeah that's right and that's when i started playing it so and i kind of want to play it in preparation for the sequel because it's set in uh, san francisco which i'm like i'm excited for that uh so yeah that i need to try it again yeah you need to go with a different mindset interesting yeah, yeah. Not. I've learned that too, though, that if you start to compare their game to their hype, or if you start to compare them to other games before you start playing them, you play about a half an hour of them, and you're like, nope, I'm not interested. Yeah. yeah. Like, I do that often. I'm like, oh, yeah, this game's going to be the next game I'm going to want to play all the time. And then I'll get in there and I'll play it for a half an hour. And I'm like, can I play something else yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I know. I'm sorry. Because, you know, I stream and all that. So I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, sorry, stream. Like, I tried. I don't want to play this. Yeah. Hopefully, I. <laughs> I'm just but hoping me, I can go to uh hope yeah. sorry Robin, but I no, was going, like, hopefully I can go into Horizon again, but like with a different mindset this time. Cause I'm like I, like as Robin, I fucking love Breath of the Wild. So I'm real and I like the pre I really like the premise of like robot dinosaurs, like prehistoric robots going there. I'm like that idea, I'm like, that's so cool. So hopefully I can go back into it uh yeah. th down the like, line. I, it's gonna be hard for 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 me at least. For a game like to beat Fallout New Vegas, that I will play and never get tired of. <laughs> because the Fallout the game. series is definitely, or Bethesda really has those time eater games, though. And yeah, I love that. Like, um, I remember uh, when my brother Stefan got uh, Fallout seventy six. He got it when it first came out, and I was just kind of like, I, I don't really want to play it because it doesn't. I've heard not great things about it. Um, it wasn't. I got it so I can play it with him, and I, I kind of started to enjoy it, and I kind of stopped playing it. It wasn't until they had the Wastelander update 
or they added in more uh, NP- uh, speaking NPC characters for uh, for story mode. I was like, no, this is this is not bad. I can I can keep playing this. Well, and right now I have it uninstalled because I, there are other games I'm trying to play that, and that one takes so much space. So <laughs> like, but I will say Fallout 76 right like nowadays. It took a while, but it, it is a game worthy of playing in terms of a Fallout game. Um, I still think it's a bit weird that it's a multiplayer game, but it's still... Uh, it's, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Q and God Howard. I remember God Howard. Oh, yeah, God, God Howard. God Howard. <laughs> another, another taking us back thing. All right. Um, but yeah, since Robin, you were doing something. Uh, what, <laughs> yeah. Robin? What have you recently watched, play, seen, etc., etc., etc.? Since I wouldn't shut up, let me say mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you so, want to talk? Talk. So <laughs> we'll so, wait. So the last show. Go on. Uh, I talked about <laughs> the last show. Um, Edgar talked about um, for his pick was the um, Uncharted trilogy thing that he's playing. Um, I since then I've recently beaten that and now I'm on Uncharted Four, um, which I think for specifically for Uncharted Four, this is my third time playing it. I just really love the story in it. Mm. Um, and then after finally playing the other three Uncharted games, I'm like thinking like why didn't I get into the other Uncharted games sooner? Like I just love the stories in it. I lo- and it's like for me, like I'm a I'm a I'm a history major. So just the fact that like, oh my god, I got to I got to find El Dorado. I got to find <laughs> uh, I got to find um, what is basically Sri Lanka. I forgot the name of it. Um, what they call it in the, in the game, and then finding the the sands of the Atlant- Atlantis of the sands, and then now I found Libertaria. The lost pirate utopia. Um, it, it's just like it's just so great because it just makes me think like, oh god, what if these places actually did exist? And it just it makes me think like I, I really like being a historian and all that stuff and just learning about it. It's just great. It's a great game, not just for you know the story of it and some of the gameplay of it, but just you get to you start to learn, read up more about these lost cities and all that. And it's just it's just a great game. That's that's what I've been playing. I haven't finished it yet, but uh, the fourth one. But nice, I'm, I'm getting there. I enjoy games that I, I might have to go and take a look at those because I enjoy games that create like some knowledge or like they yeah. educate you a little bit while you play. When you when you're looking around in the in all of the games, all the Uncharted games, you can actually find uh, treasures that you can pick up, and then it, it tell like it has like little information on what they are. And what, what what's supposed to be representing of where you find it or something like that, and it's kind of interesting. And, and like just also, it's like these are based off of real legends too, um, which is what I which is what's great about it. Yeah. All right. Tell me well, when I'm, you go to Bigfoot Hollow, which is Bigfoot where all Hollow. of the Bigfoots live. <laughs> well, like, um, I do, like the thing that the thing that. Does oh, I'm make sorry. Me... I'm sorry. Not Bigfoots. Big feet. Big feet. Big feet. <laughs> <laughs> I will say what makes me kind of sad with the Uncharted series is that the fourth one is the last one. If you want to count the uh, um, Lost. The, the, the Lost Legacy, which is like a small expansion thing that they did, mm-hmm. um, it, I, that, that is their last one. I'm hoping, I don't think they are going to, but because after Naughty Dog finished with Last of Us Part II, um, I don't know if they're going to do a new IP or if they're going to do, if they are going to decide, hey, maybe we can do Uncharted 5. I don't know how we can, <laughs> but we can't. We can try to do one. Um, just, to, just to have like a new, like for the new generation for PS5, which I'm still trying to find and get one, but. Oh, I have God. a question for you, Robin, because you brought it up. The Last of Us Part 2. Do you think they're going to make The Last of Us Part 3 colon this is just a money grab? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, in terms of the story in Last of Us Part 2, I think that's literally just the end of it. Um, yeah, but The Last of Us Part 3 
colon, this is just a money grab because you're going to buy it. Yeah. Um, I yep. Mean, it, just like I'll... it's it's a lot like Skyrim in that, <laughs> uh, you know. Did I hear Skyrim? <gasps> oh, no. I am God Howard. Oh, my God. God, God Howard's voice changed. God Howard. God Howard's Adam Apple grew. Oh, no. Yes. Yes, I have decided to come to you as a more pure me. Oh, this is you know, with a voice like that, you know, he's tucking his manhood into his sock. <laughs> Mine's tucked in my sock. <laughs> yes, but Skyrim! Buy it! Now! Oh, okay, okay, God Howard, we'll buy it. Okay, we gotta say that we gotta say that we have to buy it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not really... uh, yeah, I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll yeah. buy it. Oh, I even owned it already, but I'm gonna buy it again yeah. just because I was talking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. oh. Okay, yeah. yeah. right. we'll, we'll make sure to buy it, Mr. God Howard. We'll make sure we'll buy the platinum edition that's on the Samsung fridge. We'll make sure to buy that one. <laughs> Robin, 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 come down. We gotta, we gotta say the prayer. We gotta say the prayer. Oh God, Howard, please don't hurt us. Oh God, Howard, we'll buy Skyrim, 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 Skyrim. We love Skyrim so much. We'll buy I'll just say the prayer. Guys, he's gone. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Oh, I, was I was just BS. I was just the prayer, but. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I guess it worked. <laughs> oh. You're gonna have to remember that one. Yeah. Because now it's canon. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so I guess moving on to to Will, Mr. Uh, Miss. I'm just kidding. I'm leaving. <laughs> All right, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Guess... Mr. Will, what have you uh, recent pl recently played, watched, seen, gamed, etc., etc., etc. Um, I watched Shit's Creek. I watched all of it. Uh, it was a ride. Um, I love that show. Ooh. Uh, I wept, and I don't mean I cried. I mean, like, I wept. The last few episodes of the series, I was, like, crying and laughing and then crying. And then I watched the documentary about the making of the final season, and I cried and wept, and it was it was a lot. It was like an emotional thing. Uh, I really recommend it. Uh, six out of five stars. Really good show. Uh, the Levies, all of them. Uh, O'Hara, just fun. It's all great. I, I, I recommend I it. I did not know. For some reason, it just went over my head that Dan, that Dan Levy and uh, Eugene well, Levy and Eugene Levy were 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 son and. And father, I didn't realize that until I watched his uh, Dan Levy's monologue on SNL. Right? Like, oh. I did not tell with the eyebrows. The I, eyebrows. Don't, I don't exactly. know. I don't know. Like it, it just went right over my head. Even my mom was saying, "Like, how did you not know that?" I don't know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> did you know that the waitress is his daughter? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't. No, Twyla the waitress is not from is, his daughter. Is Twyla Sarah is Levy. Daughter. Yeah, yep. Sarah Levy is Dan Levy's sister. And therefore, Damn. I love that show, by the way. I've watched it twice, and every time I have a chance and I'm not watching anything, The Office used to be my go to show. I watch Shit's Creek. No. I need, so, to, I need to start. Great. Yeah, I need, I need to start to watch that. I need to watch Shit's Creek. And, and I, I'm both like, in a lot of ways, like, I'm happy that they only made six seasons, but I am like fucking gutted that they only made six seasons. <laughs> like. <laughs> Like, That's how I was with Friends in the Office, though, too. Like, those, you know, those are the classics, throwbacks. But, yeah, like, why are there only so many seasons? So keep going. You're doing well. <laughs> yeah. But, like, they're ending it. They end it. How they ended it? Oh, my God. I just cried. I cried, like, like, uh, just a little bitch boy like i just cried it was amazing it was such a good show i'm gonna watch it again i might start watching it again tonight like it's just a good show <laughs> go watch it if you haven't watched it watch shit's creek edgar me um uh since well i'm taking a class that's like about um that that is cool but wait hang on we gotta do it we gotta, we gotta do this officially so edgar okay. what yes. have you recently watched played 
listen to, etc., etc., etc. Um, uh, so, uh, I'm, I've been watching a lot porn. of like quote on say porn, don't say porn. <laughs> 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 I've been watching a lot of quote unquote horror movies because I'm taking a class that's called horror movies. And so they're getting us a lot of movies. And the two recent films that were on the list that I had to watch was um, Metropolis from 1921, I believe. Or 19... Oh, that, that, yeah, 21. It's a yeah. German film. Yeah, I saw, I saw Metropolis and Citizen Kane. Oh, Citizen Kane! And oh, Citizen, wait, oh, Citizen Kane's a horror movie? I, it's, it's, I, I, he explained in the class, but I, I need to look at it. What? He, it's not it. a horror movie, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, you but Citizen hey, Kane, it was a good, it was a good thing. excuse to finally watch Citizen Kane and Metropolis. I had those on two of my list, and I will, I will say, I really, I really liked Metropolis for a movie that was made in the early twenties. Holy fuck, the production in that film is fucking amazing. And the same thing with and with Citizen Kane, I was like, holy shit. I'm like, I really like Citizen Kane. I really I was like, I had a better appreciation for Citizen Kane when I watched Mank. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I haven't I haven't seen Citizen Kane before. Like after I watched the movie Mank, I was like, I need to watch yeah. Citizen Kane. I need and then I watched yeah. it, I'm like, holy shit. Now I have now I have to rewatch Mank, because like now I gotta like like when I was watching Citizen Kane, I, I was thinking back to a lot of a uh, to a lot of Mank. And but like yeah, Citizen Kane is it's a really great film. I can see why that movie is like the one that oh in every film school they always introduce it. Like if that's always like the the thing yeah. they always say. And but yeah, we Man haven't we haven't we haven't talked about Mank yet, but I hope we can review it yeah. soon. Um, for the viewers, for Mank is basically about how the movie Citizen Kane was written. Mm -hmm. It's directed by David Fincher and it's written by his late father Jack Fincher. And it's really good. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend watching this movie. Um, I, I, I always joke like, like I've, I, I said like I think I found my new quote unquote Schindler's List movie where I'll keep watching it and never get tired of it. Damn. And, and I will say like for <laughs> it is kind of messed up that like I've watched I I've I've watched this so many goddamn times. I've watched the movie Schindler's List like seven to eight times. And. And there's a reason for it. <laughs> it's like my mom, uh, she's a she's a history professor, and she does specifically has a uh, a Holocaust class or mm -hmm. geno genocide class also. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, you're I, right. I, it, I, Bank is yeah. like it's up for a bunch of Golden Globes this year. It's up for for best picture of a drama, uh, best actor for uh, what's his name? What's his name? Oh. I was about oh to God! Say, he was, I don't know why I was he, about to say Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert Gottfried. I'm he played, in right. He played uh, Gary Oldman. Uh, Commissioner Gary Oldman. Here we go. Thank Gary you, Oldman Hannah. Is nominated. Gary Oldman is nominated. Uh, uh, Jack Fincher is nominated for screenwriting. Uh, David Fincher nominated for best directing. And uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross are nominated for Best Score, which mm -hmm. I also highly recommend listening to the score. It is really good, <laughs> and it's a very different pace from from uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus, Atticus Ross, especially if you know um, Trent Rez Reznor from uh, Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Why such large nails? I, that's the name of the band. <laughs> Oh okay. I'm I guess like curious. I guess like all like each band member's nails like all of them together equals nine inches. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe they weren't <laughs> talking about nails. No. Oh. Maybe it's a maybe it's a euphemism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They got really long nails. A euphemism for the penis. For the hey, Michael, Michael penis. penis. <laughs> Michael penis. But yeah, yeah well, uh, but Metropolis and go oh, go on, Robin. I was gonna say for Citizen Kane, like when I watched it, like and you know I don't we don't tend to get political on the show at all, and I'm not trying no, to. No, we here. don't. Hands I'm just over censor. I'm just I'm I'm saying like this has a after what happened this year, and then watching Citizen Kane, I'm like, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> 
it, like, no, I got, like, the movie made sense. No, I'm just kidding. I, mean, <laughs> I, was, I was just saying, like, the movie made a bit more sense mm. whenever I watched it and trying yeah. to comparing it to what happened. It's what recently a, happened. Yeah. That's, all, that's all about it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Citizen Kane, <laughs> Citizen Kane is a really, it's a pretty good movie. Same thing with Metropolis. But yeah, guys. Well, we at the uh, we at the end of the show right now. We're almost at the the three hour mark. But uh, once again, I we I do want to thank Mister Bot Push for being our uh, our lovely guest today on our show. Is there anything you would like to to plug or like to announce anything on the show before we end this show? I am terrible at plugging my social media because <laughs> I always feel weird and braggy. But um, I just want to say thank you guys for having me. It's been such a blast. I've made some new friends out of you guys because, you know, I haven't really spoke to you guys prior. But I definitely plan to tune into every one of these that I get a chance to from now so, on. Sorry um, about that. Uh, you were just muted <laughs> in, this, in this channel specifically for the, the Locks channel. I was able to fix that when... Uh, you were on early, like when you guys started. So I was like, okay, oh. no, I gotta, I gotta fix this because he's <laughs> muted. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm used to being put in the corner. Um, <laughs> That's me in the corner. Anyway, we can't use that song. Uh, <laughs> thank, I just want to say thank you guys so much for having me. It's been a really good fun no time. And uh, you guys, thanks have, for coming on. Thanks, fun. man. Yeah, we're so You're happy. Welcome. We're really happy that you got in. Yeah. Yeah, I heard you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Robin, get out of here. Get out of um, here, Robin. You guys, you guys have a great night, and I hope to see you guys pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Thanks for coming. Yeah, don't forget to follow Edgar. Edgar. Uh, as of course. I'm already following you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't, I was about to say, I'm like, don't forget to follow Mr. Bot Push on, on his Twitch. Follow him over there. He's a really cool guy, and we're happy to have him on the show. And, of course, if you like us and you like what we did on this podcast, why don't you give us a follow? Or if you want to be part of the Discord to be a part of our community, join our uh, join our Discord. And of course, if you are late to the show and you want to join in on this uh, on the shows, but you are not able to watch it live, subscribe to the subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll have it. Th- we'll have this episode hopefully in a couple of days. And with that, guys, thank you all so much for watching the show. Thank you, Mister Bot Push, for being on their show. We love you all. We hope you guys have a wonderful night and a wonderful weekend. And Bye bye. Bye bye. Quick. 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 Quick.